Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Ming Chen from Comic Book Ben, and you're listening to Best Threesome Ever. Find Best Threesome Ever on Facebook. Uh, search Best Threesome Ever. That's three with the number three. It is my favorite podcast. Welcome to Best Threesome Ever, a podcast discussing all things revolving around nerdy pop culture. Probably not what you were expecting. But it's just as fun. Now here are your hosts, Nick, Rob, and Kevin. Uh, Kevin, you hate Tom Hanks, right? I, I I don't care for him much. I don't hate him in the way that I hate, say, other right. curly haired dickheads who shouldn't have a career but do that Josh shall not Gad. be named. I just, was just saying, <laughs> I was just saying shall not be named. What about his son? You hate his son as doesn't much. He Colin s- Hanks? Doesn't he? Is that the one who raps and generally sucks? No, that's Chet. Oh, oh that's Chet. Yeah, Chet he, sucks. The guy who acts like a Chet. I, I guess I don't know his son very well. Then uh, Colin uh, Hanks was in Orange, Orange County. He Orange was in County, band yeah. one episode of Band of Brothers. Yeah, he looked exactly like his son or his dad. Uh, uh, I'm glad you knew exactly what I that know. was. <laughs> I have no feelings, positive or negative, about Colin Hanks. Fair enough. He sure is a person that exists. Yeah. All right, here we go. Best threesome ever, episode 138, brought to you by Heroic Goods and Games and Jaybird Wines. I'm Nick. And I'm Rob. I'm Kevin. And we are back from our vacation. Yay. Yeah, we are. Vacation I'll ever want it. Vacation has to get away. You made it weird, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that the song needed some bass. <laughs> Speaking of weird, do you ever watch that TikTok kid? Uh, he's a younger kid. Probably no, but, <laughs> but he's like, continue. He's like a teenage 19, 18, 19. Uh, he plays saxo- saxophone solos in songs that, that don't, don't, need. Ha- don't need or have a saxophone. I have seen that guy. He's amazing. It's it's pretty fucking funny. Now and he's, I'm going to have to. Yep. He's really he's really good, too. And he's just like, I don't know about this. Oh, Okay, I didn't know that Tupac's uh, song needed a saxophone solo in it, but apparently it did. Yeah, well, I, I, I now want, you have to look it up. Apologies to your wall-to-wall thirst traps, Kevin. I, I, well, that's the thing is I, I don't have a lot of thirst traps. I, my, my TikTok wall is, well, I should say our TikTok wall. Oh, sure. Uh, is a lot of, like, funny animals um, <laughs> uh, and yeah, our, our friends. Oh, sure. Right? Uh, right. There, there's, there's a few butts, but, uh, and, and a lot of Mrs. Mosby's left tit. Uh, who she does in fact have the best TikTok, uh, so subscribe to her. Uh, All right, uh, Mrs. Mosby. Mrs. Mosby's left tit oh. is the name of her TikTok, uh, and she is um, Colby Smolder. No, 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 no. Uh, she she just does really like dramatic interpretations of life events, oh, okay. um, and and they're f- fucking hilarious. So they're satirical, very satirical. Okay, great. And, uh, it sounds wonderful. I'll, I, I may have to play one or two for you. You'll, you'll enjoy it. I'll just go, yeah. or I'll just go on our TikTok page or, or do that. Yeah. And uh, Mrs. Mosby's left tit, whatever your real name is, come on our podcast. Yep, yeah. There it is. Because I promise you, our audience will will fall in love with you and yeah. and your ridiculousness. Right. Um, yeah. We're on vacation. That's what the episode was posted. The previous episode was posted real late because I made the decision on my own to not really do any work while I was on vacation. Which is good. I, good, I, good I really call. wanted to just to be like, you know what? I could, but mm, no, I'm going to be on vacation. I also didn't do work on vacation, but thankfully they paid me anyways. Yeah, I got paid anyways, too. Yeah. This is the first time in a long time that I've had a this long of a vacation, but be a paid vacation. Mm. Like, I actually got paid while I was on vacation. Those are nice. Yeah. Was, yeah. I felt like an adult all of a sudden. I was like, oh, that's kind of nice. And I got back to an email from my boss saying I still had a week of PTO that I hadn't signed up for for the rest of the year. And I'm like, hell yeah. Yeah, I, got, I still got like another four or five days. That, yeah. Uh, my boss is like, take the time off. So vacations, yeah, we uh, we all took a vacation. Um, do we want to do our normal stuff and then talk about vacations? Or? Yeah, let's let's, let's get yeah. through let's get through the nerd news. There's right. a lot of it. We've been there, gone yeah, for yeah, a little bit. DC so. fandom and all sorts of shit. <clears throat> yeah. Might need to do a bit of a lightning round on some stuff. Rob, did you see Dune yet? No, I didn't. Okay, sorry. That's all right. Uh, I probably won't either. Actually, did you see the it's original just, Dune? Yes, I have seen the original Dune. It's very similar. Okay. Ish. Cool. I'm just not the target audience for that because it's just I uh, I didn't read the books. I barely paid to. attention during the original movie. Don't need to. Um, I will say that this one is a lot easier to, and this is uh, 
coming from somebody who had a, a lot of trouble paying attention to the original film, sure, uh, because mm-hmm. it was made in the eighties, mm-hmm. and and eighties had uh, a lot of problems of, with uh, story um, well, not progression. Only, not only that, but it was David Lynch, so yeah. It was, <laughs> when it, 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 usually, that gets my attention, though. <laughs> um, but but this one, it was it was much more enthralling. Okay, yeah, and there was less. Like, I remember and I, being a fan of the original. I remember. Uh, it being really trippy and kind of hard to follow because they were it was so trippy that you kind of lose the story because they keep going on this thing and you're like is this is the story about Paul Atreyu fucking <laughs> Paul Atreyu even I know it's a, a treaties right <laughs> Atreides okay yeah. okay uh, Kyle McLaughlin's character just fucking tripping out about spice all the time or what the fuck's the point here mm. uh, but this one has cut that out and okay. um, oddly enough. Part one, by the way, it was a part one. Spoilers, sort of. Um, and that that was a surprise to everybody. And there will be a part two, which got highlighted or green lighted recently, which is no surprise there. But green light, I, I'm kind surprised of a surprise, the actually. part one was longer than the original theatrical release of the David Lynch version. Okay. But there is a version from David Lynch that uh, is th- just over three, maybe. Although David Lynch said he never would want to do a full like director's cut, director's cut because he feels that that movie was his worst and biggest failure ever. Sorry if my BB unit chirps during this. That's all right. Yeah, we have a lot of nerd stuff too that we all we have. do. We do. So uh, let's start. So Shatner went into space. Captain Kirk, he sure did. And then yep. unfortunately he came back. Yeah. Yep. Um, I acknowledge the importance of William Shatner's role in Star Trek and making uh, sci-fi sort of not just something for the, the quiet nerds, but, right. yeah. but mainstream. But it also influencing uh, exactly the mission that happened that he went on, mm-hmm. influencing space travel and, and um, in influencing basically half of the astronaut, astronauts that exist today. Exactly. Um, however. However, he also sucks dicks in hell and I hate him. Yeah. You know who I think would have been a better choice? Sigourney Weaver. I, I actually, I, I don't care about who would have been a better choice. I, I, right. just, yeah. I, just, I just feel that maybe she would have been better. I mean, whatever. I mean, how long were they up there? Like 30 minutes and then they came back? Six. Six minutes? Six minutes. Whole six minutes. It was in, he was in, he was past the whatever barrier. I don't remember the name of it right now, but he was past the whatever barrier for like four minutes. And then like a minute of, a minute up, minute down, and like, I think in total they were up for twelve minutes, but like going up was a a thing, right? F- few minutes in in space, kind of, sort of, like just on the edge of it, right? Just uh, before and you then they entered, came back down. yeah, yep. Like where the B the or spy planes fly, that one really big one that's awesome that Adam Adam Savage was in. It's got the huge wingspan. I forget what it is, the mm. B something, um, but it flies up there just on the edge edge of space. Sure. And it's very cool. But anyways, yeah, so William Chandler, I don't really feel one way or the other about it. Yeah. I, do, I did like his shit talk to Picard, like take that Picard or whatever he said on his little post note. It was kind of... Nah, if, if one of them is going to go up, I think it should be Shatner between Shatner and yeah. uh, Stewart. But I don't care that he went up. Yeah, I just, I really he's, he's, he's a shit bag of a human being now. And, and like, man... Good for you. You went to space because Bezos has a hard on for you. That's fine. Good for you. Good yeah. for fucking you, man. Yeah. Now we can move on and say that you were the first uh, spaceship captain to actually go into space. Cool. Mm. But not the first Starfleet officer. Correct. No, that's correct. Well, no, that's, that's right. That's technically not true because Mae Jemison came back and then was in Star Trek because you can't actually be on like television and earn profit for like acting or things like that unless you're not no longer part of NASA. Is that who you're talking about? It doesn't look like that's who you're yes, talking Yes, that's about. who I'm talking about, but okay. it still counts. Yeah, she was technically the first Starfleet officer in space. She's Okay, she, she was the first real astronaut on Star Trek. Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, it, I'm, I'm being pedantic. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also, wasn't Scotty sh- Ashes shot into space? Yeah, sure. Take that, Shatner, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Don't come yeah. on our podcast. Jimmy, Jimmy Doohan made it first, although Gene Roddenberry, Roddenberry made it before. No, he went on the same mission as Jimmy Doohan. 
actually. So okay. yeah. Yeah. I didn't know I didn't know Gene Ronberry's ashes were his ashes were also shot into I space. I don't care about him really. No offense. No, that's it's kind of a again, it's the same thing of like Gene Ronberry created a very important thing. I don't care about him. Right. Yeah, because if you watch that, there's a there's a documentary about him and the the original Star Trek, and like Gene Roddenberry just sounded like a horrible human being, and they they kind of barred him from being on set, and like they're like go away, great great you you made this, uh, but go away. Yeah, JK, so. you're next. <laughs> <laughs> Is she ever on set? Yes, know. probably. Oh, me. Yes. Because she's usually the writer these but days. Al- but also, you made this thing, now go away. Yeah. yeah. yeah you're right. Uh, All right, well, moving on. Yeah. Um, Sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. I was just thinking about, like, she would have to create something better than Harry Potter. I think this, this is her, quote-unquote, 15 minutes of fame, which is actually lasting, like, 30 years, but still. Yeah. Um, anyways, so Catherine Hahn is going to spin-off series. Her character from WandaVision is getting a, sp- a separate spin-off series, which I think will be kind of fun. That will be kind of fun. Is and, that official? I didn't actually see that. Uh, yeah, it's it's official. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So Neat. I'm excited That's about cool. that. I love her as an actress. I think she's yeah. wonderful. And, and her, her character was fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so good. And it'll be kind of fun to see back, a, a backstory of a... Uh, I don't want to say not so popular character, uh, but, but a, le- a more obscure character. A more obscure character, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. I like it when they get backstories, especially when they're really good. Especially, or ref- let me rephrase: when the actress that is playing said part is really good. I like to give them that they did it so yeah. well; they're getting more credit for that. I.e., Hawkeye. Mm-hmm. Speaking of uh, fun, uh, popular characters getting backstories, mm-hmm. we had a trailer release today. I'm going to skip ahead for you here. Uh, the trailer for Lightyear came out. It did. Yeah. And I'm very excited. It, it, looks, it looks like it's going to be fun. And I'm assuming this is supposed to be like the story of the inspiration for the toy. Yes. This yes, is like the, the Buzz Lightyear and Star Command. This is the movie in the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Which yeah, sounds it looks, fun. It does look good. Uh, there's only two words or three words spoken in the whole trailer. That's not true. No, that's oh, not true. That's the one that I saw. Uh, then maybe watch the uh, the first teaser and not the full trailer. The very end one where there, he's like to infinity, and then he goes and. Well, the girl says to infinity, right? But there was plenty more that was said during the trailer. Yeah. Oh, then I saw a different trailer. Huh. Anyways, it looked good. There was yeah. no. It was all music and just like words. It would. It, I mean, it was David Bowie. So you're, I, I'm you're for David it. Bowie. God, I wish I was. Oh my god! That no, I don't. He's I dead. Never mind. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks good though. I'm excited for it. Yeah. No, it looks it looks like a lot of fun. Um, do I need it? No. Am I going to watch it? Fuck yeah. <laughs> I'm disappointed by how hard Kyle Kerr is shitting on it. I mean, I don't think he's shitting on it that hard, but like, I get his point, and I get your point, and I think you're both right, and I think that Pixar can do both. Honestly. We can we can do the we can do the light year story, but we can also do an original piece of content, and everyone can be happy. I just don't understand. <laughs> like, but but it, they're they're given every opportunity to make whatever they want. Yeah, and and this is what they wanted to make. I'm not entirely convinced it wasn't by you know corporate fiat, but yes, I understand. What I you mean, mean, it was likely. Hey, the there are we have a couple IPs that that we'd like to to do something with. Um, uh, you know, for yeah. rich head reasons, uh, what would you guys like to do? Well, fuck it, let's do let's do light year. Fuck yeah, guys, let's do light year. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that 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 middle ground thing, you're both right. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, All right. That's fine. Yeah. <sighs> I have opinions, but about that individual, but okay. He was a little salty, Sammy, about uh, about the, the the gun thing with the bullets, and both Nick and I were correcting him, saying, "No, no, no." Nick's like, "I, I, you know, this is what I do." Yeah, um, you know, I, I don't, I know you're in the military a long time ago, and that's that's good for you. Um, but you know, I'm I'm in film, and you know, I this is what I do, and I'm like, it, you know, I'm I I know props, right? <laughs> and yeah. I, I I do film too, and this is this is what they use. He's like, well, you know. He's like, just you, say you're wrong, dude. You sound like yeah. you make it sound like I'm advocating He's, for. I was like, well, no, you, we're just saying that you're wrong about. Th- and 
what I hear he's, more about he's the never st- wrong. <laughs> right. What I hear more about the stories is that they were apparently dicking around with a gun and shooting it on set, like at target, like target practicing, and that's how those live rounds got on set. Classic. Oh, yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. So. Horrible situation. Anyways. Um, I agree, BB-37. Yeah. <laughs> in a row? Ah. <laughs> you should write in a row somewhere on him and like... Oh, my God, a little Sharpie. Oh, Just, I wonder if I can get it like engraved on him. But I mean like do it in do it in Arabesh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah. I, I was saying do it like um like the the helmet in the low... In the, on, the, on the cover, on the poster for a uh, full metal jacket. Like born to kill, <laughs> <laughs> just in a row in Arabish, in the style of I the. Have, full I could probably jacket. fit on his little hockey puck head somewhere. There's yeah. a, you could probably put it right over here on this little thing right here. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love that. There's a. <laughs> I have an Arabish translator on my phone. It's a. It's a. It's a little app. There we go. Sometimes, um, sometimes his head needs to like find itself. Right. So moving. So moving on. Uh, did you guys? Were you guys ever big? I don't think we've ever discussed this show really, uh, but it was a. I think a very popular show. Were you guys ever a fan of that 70s show? No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I liked that I 70s show as much as I liked How I Met Your Mother. I thought it was funny, but not a show I need to watch over and over again. Seeing How I Met Your Mother, I could watch continuously forever. Uh, that 70s I show, uh, I, once Eric and, and Kelsa were gone, I thought it left a, a lost yeah, a lot of the magic. It did. Yeah. But I don't think a lot of, um, a lot of comedy shows can... Can survive losing like their two biggest, the, their main character, and then their main draw. Yeah, and yeah. and uh, and and Kelso was uh, like the Phil Hartman in news radio. Yep. Yeah, of the show, he was the breakout star for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and when and when we lost um, when we lost Phil, yeah, bless them, they tried, but. But yeah. John, no, they didn't. They got John Lovitz. Bless them, they tried. But no, they didn't. <laughs> they got John piece of shit Lovitz. Yeah, but, but John bless Lovitz, them, they tried. But John Lovitz and Phil Hartman were best friends. I will start <laughs> praising Josh Gad if we continue on this. I'm just saying that's why they got him. I'm just saying that's why they got him. That's all I'm saying. I didn't say it was a good choice. I'm just saying that's why they got him. Uh, you have Josh Gad. I have John Lovitz. Let's fucking end it there. <laughs> <laughs> the stain from yeah, Rob. No, I fucking okay. hate him. <laughs> I get it. All right. Anyways, <laughs> uh, it was funny. Good time. Good show. Anyways, uh, so there's a spinoff show called That '90s Show, apparently yeah. coming, and I'm like, I kind of want to watch it because, like, obviously, I was well, all of us were kids of the '90s, so I think it'd be just kind of fun to watch it for that. But I'm just like, I thought they already tried that with the Goldbergs, or the Goldbergs is really the '80s. Yeah. Um, so I'm kind of like, eh. but Kurtwood Smith and De- Deborah Joe Rupp, which I'm very excited for, and they and yeah. they're coming back as the roles, and it's it's about uh, Eric and Donna's daughter moving in with, w- moving in with them. Okay, it's important to mention the daughter's name is Leia. The daughter's name is Leia yeah. because they're Star Wars nerds. Shocking. <laughs> I, have a, I have a cousin named Luke, and then his sister is named Leia. Awesome. Yeah, and then Max and oh shit, I forget my other cousin's name. I'm, Chewy? I'm a horrible person. No. Uh, Max and God, I'm a horrible person. That's fine. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, my cousins, Cincinnati cousins. I can't remember name. <laughs> sure. They're hor- I'm horrible. Anyway, so yeah, um, it lo- I haven't really seen much other than the no, story and the synopsis and stuff. But All we have is, is announcement that it's going into production. You think it'll be in the same house, but like a 90s version of the house? I think so, yeah. Probably red and... I uh, forget the wife's name, character, character's Kitty. name. Kitty. Kitty, right. Red and Kitty's uh, house. Yeah. yeah. I hope she's still a drunk. Oh, that'd be great. Oh, love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, um, 70s show was like on that level of like, if it was on, I'd watch a little bit of it and then move on. And I got enough of the show to get the archetypes of the characters. Yeah, yeah. I didn't really follow it, though. Yeah. I, like I said, I watched it. I thought parts, you know, the shows and episodes I watched were funny. I loved Red. I loved Kitty. I loved. Yeah. Yes. What I say? No. Neither of you said anything. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, I wasn't a huge fan of Kelso. I thought he was a little overacted, but. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but I love and Fez was kind of a garbage human being. Um, Fez, the Fez. actor, the actor that plays Wilmer. Yeah. Was you he? Mean- Danny Masterson, Danny who Ma- played Hyde. Hyde is the... Hyde is a... Also- Wilmer Valderrama is not great, but has gotten better. Okay. 
Fair Danny enough. Masterson is shit. He sucks so much. Oh, so yeah. much. Well, it yeah. mainly came across when he was like, oh, I'm dating Lindsay Lohan. Not a big deal, but at the time she was 16. 17. 17. She whatever. was 17. They didn't acknowledge the relationship after she, until she until after she turned 18. Yeah, shitty. He is. He has since come come out and been like, "Yeah, that wasn't great." Yeah, but he oh, did that a sorry. few times. Yeah, and 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 he has come out and said that wasn't great. Well, like Danny Masterson hasn't even bothered to do that. Right. Well, that's so. True. That's true. You're right. And arguably was much worse. Not that I. True. Not that I think uh, grooming and uh, sexual assault are on the same level. Or should be compared. They're both bad. It's I, I'm bothered I by it because there's hole, predatory but, behavior, and that's yeah. that's the thing that kind of gets to me. But anyways, yeah. moving on to more happier news. Sure. I wasn't sure if you were happy about this or not, uh, uh, Rob, since it's one of your characters you've wanted to see for a while. But apparently, uh, Will Poulter is going to play Adam Warlock in Guardians Two. Yeah, Will Poulter. Yeah. Poulter. Sorry. Yes, Poulter. Yeah, Will Poulter. I. How do you feel about that? I feel pretty good about that. That's a good casting, I think, and he looks. It's the eyebrows. It's uh huh. <laughs> yeah, he looks. He looks good. Uh, 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 yeah, I was gonna say, have we seen him lately? Oh yeah, late. Uh, D- dude, dude is dude is Jack. Glow and, up. Yeah, yeah. From that nerdy <laughs> kid look that he had with the sort of uh, English bulldog face he yep. had in that Narnia movie. Yep. Yep. Oh, is, who? Who? He's the older. No. Who is he? No, so what he was. He, he was the he was the cousin in that, uh, but he was also the the son in uh, We Are the Millers. Yep, oh. um, he's been a. He, you know, everyone knows him from the meme where he where everyone's yeah yeah that guy yeah 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 weird English bulldog face yeah can I almost I, play the live action version if you dyed his hair dark of the kid from Toy Story yeah yeah he, he looks yeah. like Sid in his yeah, younger, yeah. In his he looks a lot days. like Sid yeah oh, not anymore though now he just looks no. like fucking Adam Warlock yeah he yeah. does. It's a good looking dude. Um, I like that casting. It's good. I don't know a lot about Adam Warlock. He's the guy with the. Uh, he has powers on the same level of fucking Thanos. Okay. He, yeah, he is. He's basically um, a, a manufactured Eternal. Yeah. Mm. Um, and he's he is whom's I know. BD8, he's who is know. in the 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 gold coffin at the end of of Guardians. Yep. Two. Yes. Uh, yep. They they teased him long ago. We didn't ever think they were going to come back to it. Though. I'm gonna have to go watch that horrible movie again. Crap. I don't like Guardians okay, of the Galaxy too. I understand, and yeah, it's not a great movie, but there are some great moments in that movie. There are. It has a lot of it. It does it. It's like uh, the the first Michael Bay Ninja Turtles movie. Yeah. Uh, the pieces of it are incredible, but the full sum of its parts are meh. yeah. 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 It's, I, yeah. But I, but I would fry? much hmm? have a curly fry. I would much rather watch uh, Michael Bay's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles than I would Guardians of the Galaxy Two. Wow! How, wow! Wow! I don't agree with you. But yeah. then, in fact, like, I've watched it several times. <sighs> I'm weird. I know. Sorry. I even watched the second one too. I, mean, I only watched half of it. The end I, credits for for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two are astounding. If only for David Hasselhoff singing. Well, if. Uh, I mean, if a qualifier of a movie is how good its end credits are, that doesn't. No, no, no. I mean, there are other there are other great things about that movie, but I sure did love how that movie ended. Oh, (laughs) are are we watching Valerian? (laughs) (laughs) I like how that movie started. Oh, great, great opener. Yeah, yeah. and then it just went to shit. Right Mm -hmm. right after that, as soon as as soon as as, uh, I don't even mean the ending of that movie because that was terrible too. No, the ending's not. You're like, I'm just going to be just terrible still and learn nothing. We're going to bang yep. still, right? Yeah. Cool. Great movie. Anyway. Awesome. Uh, but yes, uh, total glow up. I'm glad he's back. Drink. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I'm glad he's back in like uh, you know the the limelight as it were because um, I don't think I've seen anything since he was still like a scrappy teen looking kid. But. Right. Yeah. Was at. <sighs> No, he wasn't in. I was just trying to wonder, remembering if he was in like, um, what was that? Uh, um, was first, like first, uh, first class, X Men First Class. No, he was definitely not in that. No, that was Havoc. Yes, that was Havoc. That wasn't First Class. That was yeah. That's X Men First Class. Havoc is in that, and um, 
That is an interesting. What am I thinking? With, that actor might have been a great Adam Warlock too. What but. movie am I thinking with Sansa as Jean Grey? What was that one called again? <laughs> Which one? Uh, that was Days of Futures Past Days or Future Apocalypse. Past. No, she wasn't in. No, you're right. Apocalypse or, or Dark Phoenix. Yes. Apocalypse is what I'm thinking of. And a lot of people didn't like that one. I did. I liked it. I didn't like Dark Phoenix. I still no, Dark Phoenix sucked. I still haven't seen it all the way through. I've I it fall, was, fall they, asleep. It was bad. They, they, uh, I, I'm now convinced that that storyline is impossible to make on film. Um, I don't think it is. I think they just need to get somebody else to do it. I mean, that's they, fair. They gave the same asshole two chances, and he fucked it up twice. Yeah, and, no, that's a good point. Like, <laughs> fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Was it was it writing, or was it directing, or both? Yes. yes. <laughs> Perfect. Good answer. All righty. <laughs> Doctor. <laughs> Doctor. Uh, speaking of uh, old shows and old characters coming back, apparently they're redoing, rebooting Munster's movie. Looks Fun yeah, with Rob, Rob Zombie? Zombie's doing it. <laughs> I know, right? Rob, Rob Zombie is rebooting the monsters. Um, He's one of the few uh, horror maker movies that I will watch. His movies are fucked up and twisted, and they actually kind of scare me a little bit. Yeah, but like monsters isn't fucked up and no, twisted. It's, not. it's funny. It's goofy. It's quirky. It's but the real Rob Zombie is kind of that way. If you ever like watch interviews with him and yeah, stuff, and He's I kind still... of funny and quirky and dark. Sure, and I hope he makes it a comedy. I don't have high hopes, but I hope he makes it if, a comedy. I also be, hope Sherry Moon isn't fucking in it. I think it'll be a dark comedy, but I think it'll be a comedy. All right. Yeah. I, and I, uh, if you want to get a real impression of uh, if Rob Zombie can do it or not, go watch his, his episode of Cribs, the old MTV show Cribs, and they go to Rob Zombie's house. I have because seen it is, that. It is very much like the Monsters house. There's lots of weird, creepy things sure. in it. Like, just kind of... Speaking of the monsters, I saw something. I don't remember if it was a meme or something, but uh, it was. So the story of when Luke Skywalker lost his hand, it was tossed into somewhere and was picked up by the Adams family, became thing. <laughs> Cute. Um, I like that story. That's a good story. It doesn't really jive with timelines, but it, you know, whatever it works. Sure. Uh, <laughs> right. I was going to say, did either of you ever see the pilot that was done in the mid 2000s, maybe late 2000s, um, called 1313 Mockingbird Lane? Uh, was that no. the documentary about the show? No, 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 no. It was a. It, it was sort of in that realm of like rebooting, reimagining, sort of Riverdaling oh, okay. um, uh, old TV shows or old properties, and it uh, starred Jerry O'Connell as Herman, and um, I don't know Ed, uh, Ed, Eddie Izzard. She played uh, Grandpa. No, oh, God, that'd be awesome. That would, would would that not have? That would have been amazing. <laughs> yeah. Eddie who? Eddie Izzard. Not Izzard? Izzard, yeah. Not Izzard? Not Izzard. Izzard. You sure it's not Izzard? How they, how they always... She pronounces it Izzard. The, every time she came onto stage on a comedy special, it was always Eddie Izzard. Huh. Yeah. I've heard her pronounce it Izzard. Maybe she's trying to... She's always like had a, a, a penchant for the French, so maybe she's trying to butter it up like Joe Dierte. Maybe. Uh, there Cute. was... <laughs> I, I didn't see. I, 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 I definitely did not see that. But I used to when I was a kid watch the old black and white reruns of the Munsters, uh, and then there was a remake in the er, mid eighties, mid Ugh. to late eighties. Sounds awful. With I want to say it was Brad Garrett as Herman Munster. I, I hate it. I hate everything you, that just came out of your mouth. I, don't I think love it. it. I don't that think it was amazing. Though. I don't think it was. Or I can't think of the actor who played him, but. Um, they made everybody a little bit older, but it was more set in modern times. So it was kind of, you know, funnier, uh, especially the daughter who just wanted to be like normal and like. Well, she always wanted to be normal, though. right? Like that the, was her thing. The one daughter, not wait. Am I thinking of the right show? Uh, you might not be. God damn it! it but no, because I remember it was the monster. It's the daughter wanted to be normal. And yeah, then there was the fucking wolf kid. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, because I was. Uh, wolf that's dog. right. I'm sorry. I used to watch the uh, because I used to get the Adams family and the monsters mixed up. Uh, I also used to watch the old black and white Adams family. Um, so the thing about Thing was Adam's family, not the Monsters. Yes, the Monsters. It was rebooted. Um, yeah. It was not Brad Garrett. I can promise you that. That was the, He wouldn't have been old enough. Uh, but yeah, it was a fun show. I used to watch all the time. And the guy that you've probably seen most recently as Grandpa on like old TV commercials and shit, he was the guy that was Grandpa on that show. Oh. Hmm. Um, oh, Jamie Farr? Because Jamie Farr played Grandpa Munster in a in a TV movie at some point. I think it was him. Yeah, 
I think. I don't know. Well, anyways, anyways. Um, yeah, Rob Zombie's making the monsters drink. Yeah, yeah, it'll be. I don't, it'll be interesting. It'll be dark. It'll be like a Tim Burton Batman. Yeah, but funnier. <laughs> Rob Zombie can be funny, especially if you watch, have you seen his horror movies. I have. They they have funny dark humor, very very dark humor in them, and that's why I think the monsters he can do the monsters just fine. I sure did see that Halloween remake he made. <laughs> I didn't see that one. Mm. I'm talking about his originals. His originals. Mm. Oh, sure, his originals like Devil's Reject. Yes, and... I haven't seen those. W- watch them. At least watch Devil's Rejects. It's the better of them. Have you seen them? Mm? Okay, they're good. They're they're it's been especially on Halloween. They're fun. I mean, they're really they're, like I said. His his movies are about the only ones that kind of scare me a little bit. And I'm usually not, I don't get scared by horror movies because they're I'm so also predictable. Also, not much of a horror film. Yeah, they're person. more like host, like the movie Hostel. They're more like that. I don't know what you is that still horror? Like Hostel? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's splatter core, but yeah, it's that's oh. what his movies are. It's like oh. Ch- Texas Chainsaw Massacre, is the hills. Have I eyes. saw hills his have Texas eyes. Chainsaw Massacre. That's right. I did see that one. That is fucked. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. That. Mm. Not as good as the Jessica Alba one, though. That's mainly because it has my future ex-wife in it. Jessica Biel? You that, her, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, so we got a bunch of trailers. We already talked about Lightyear. Uh, this new one I saw during when I went to go see Dune, but it's out also. Uh, Scream. They're soft rebooting Scream and calling it Scream. Scream and starting it the exact same way that they started Scream. Uh, so All right. Thoughts? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Don't yep, that's it, what I thought. It, Move if, on. There's, if there's no Lillard and Ulrich, I don't care. Oh, that's a great point. They were the Lillard, heart of those Skeet movies. Ulrich and, and Matthew Lillard They're deserve both dead. I don't give a shit. It's fine. Bring them it's back. A it's a horror movie. Bring movie. them back from the dead. Yeah. Yeah. How Jason, many times? Jason Todd their asses, whatever. Yeah. Or right. Jason their asses, or Michael Myers their asses, or Freddy Krueger their asses. Yeah. Or Phoenix their asses. I'm going to keep making go. comic book references. Oh, fair yeah, enough. There you go. Uh, so, yeah. Um, crisp iron their asses. There you go. Um, I'm not Wonder Woman eighty four. Yeah, I got. Yeah, you. I, I got I you. you. I, got you. I, I just, I that wasn't what caught me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's scream guys. Uh, mm. <laughs> yeah, I I did not get a scream trailer in mind. I did get um, a, a couple of other new trailers though. I got a few as well. If you mentioned them, I probably would remember them. But Batman. Yes. There was a new Batman trailer. There was trailer. a new Batman trailer. Looks um, really there sure is. Uh, but we can with w- Colin Farrell, too. Well, we can, we can get to that in, in one quick second, uh, but also Uncharted. Yes, got the Uncharted. Oh, yeah. So Uncharted. That's on, that's on, my, that's on my list here. Um, Let's just talk about Uncharted, because Scream, yeah. I don't think there's much more no, we really. can talk about. Uh, Uncharted. So, uh, they're, they're doing baby, baby Nathan Drake. Yep. Yeah. Um, and even though they should have gotten Nathan Fillion to be Sully, they got Mark Wahlberg for some reason. Yeah, it's a Transformer. <laughs> Transformers. <laughs> Fucking. So he's in the movie, I guess. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, but it, I mean, it looks good. It does look good. I know nothing about the, the game, but. Uh, their the, boy Tomb Raider. Uh, yeah. That's what I figured. And then doesn't that scene where he's falling out of the plane, isn't that in the game? Like, isn't there a scene where he's falling out of the plane that looks very similar? I think yes. so. It's been a hot minute. Same. Okay. I just I just remember doing lots of uh, platforms, puzzles, and sh- shooting a lot of people with a, a very small ratio of, of enemies who were white. Right. Well, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, um, and to the guy that was in the movie theater sitting next to me telling his girlfriend very loudly that it's impossible to jump faster than the airplane, well... Technically, you're not jumping faster than the airplane, but we'll go to physics and discuss it. When he's jumping up the boxes and he jumps from the box to the airplane, he's like, that's physically impossible. Like, very loudly explaining this to his girlfriend. Man, let me rephrase. Man, explaining it to I'm, his girlfriend. I'm imagining the, the meme of the guy at the baseball game with his hand, like, at the back of his girlfriend neck, clearly explaining something very loudly while she's just stoically staring ahead of her. Yeah. Yeah, I did. She... Seemed like a very bright, wonderful, smart girl because she was very nerdy and got very excited about nerdy things. I was like, this is a cool girl. And then he was just mansplaining things left and Stealer. right. Stealer. 
But yes, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. Uh, because, God damn it, Tom Holland, you are just a nonstop delight. He, he is a precious bean who must be protected. It's yes. very true. Have you seen the picture? It's an older picture, but there's that picture from him at Wimbledon. And he's sitting there, Emma, and, 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 and <laughs> Emma, Wat, Emma Watson is walking in front of him, but he's looking very hard to pretend like he's not excited that Emma Watson is sitting <laughs> right in front of him. <laughs> you can just see it in his face. It's very precious. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which I'm, I'm sure he's just like, hey, uh, hey, Miss Watson. You know, he's probably very polite yeah. about it. But and when all he's like, you're Hermione. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think she's like you're Spider Man, uh, right? Exactly. I mean, that, they and make beautiful he kids. Feels like the he feels like the kind of guy who will frequently forget that he's also famous, <laughs> like uh, like Mark Ruffalo. I was gonna say like Mark Ruffalo. He's like taking pictures and stuff. Like, oh my god, <laughs> look at like, look at you that, are that, also that's... famous, idiot. <laughs> yeah. Oh look, Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, you're friends with him. What do you do? Doing. <laughs> we get it, man. It's okay. <laughs> uh, these people are precious. Uh, by the way, the name of that um, television special from the aughts uh, was actually 2012, and it was called. It was just called Mockingbird Lane. Oh, okay. Yep. Mock. Yeah. I'm gonna look at it later. Um, yeah. Some other Marvel and sci-fi stuff. Uh, Marvel has got a new show coming out called Hit Monkey. Um, I didn't know anything about it. I looked at it. It's an animated series. It looks kind of fun and exciting. I didn't either. It looks fun. Yeah, it looks all right. You know anything about it, Rob? Which one? Hit Monkey. Hit Monkey. The no. animated series. No. Nope. No, nothing about it. No, no I'm not going to pretend. It, uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not going to either. It looks fun, so I'll check it out. Cowboy Bebop live action. We got their trailer dropped. Oh, that would look so good. I know zero about Cowboy Bebop, but it's cool to see Sulu what the as, actual in fuck? A, in as a lead. Uh, it's <sighs> a, I I think as as far as anime goes, you should watch it. I think you'll like it. I think you will uh, too. It has it's a an lot anime of, I like. It has like a lot of like as you watch it, you'll be like, huh, that's kind of Firefly. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, because it's kind of like sci fi ish, not so sci fi ish. Yeah, but the, it's it's still like very social issuey. Yeah. yeah, the used yeah. future. Yep. Yeah. Uh, um, did they but reboot, yes, I think. Did, did they reboot it or was it always just the original Cowboy Bebop? Just yeah, the original. Just the original. It was okay. like four yep. seasons, I think. Yeah, and it was a series, Total? right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it was popular back in the day. Ninety. Well, probably something. still popular. Yeah. Uh, um, no, I I uh, I can tell you, it's an anime that I like, and I think that's the highest praise anyone can give for anime. That you like it, yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm not a big anime guy. <laughs> I just yeah, movies and stuff. Well, the three of us proved that when we went Actually, to Fan Fusion or whatever yeah. it was. The Fan Fusion, you're right. Oh yeah, and what's his name? Just kept asking anime, questions. Anime about, Fusion. Anime Fusion. That's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just kept asking me questions. I'm like, I nothing. Know nothing about this. Don't care even a little bit about it. Sorry, guys. <laughs> We'd love to answer your questions, but I, I think I have the most knowledge of the three of us, and it is bare minimum. Yeah, yeah. probably. Very true. Um, so, yeah, it looks fun. I'm, I'm excited for it. Uh, like I said, I'm just excited to see Sulu in a lead role, see what he can do with it. Sorry, I forget the actor's name, but it was... A John better. Cho. Thank you. That. Better, better than the Harold and Kumar reference. I yeah. could, uh, I'm glad to see he's improved. He, uh, he is, the, is the man who, who gifted us. As as a Western society, with the phrase "milf," he did. He gave that to us. Sure That's did. true. And he didn't have to. And yeah. I mean, technically, yes, the writers did. But but his 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 performance is what sold the term "milf." Yeah, yeah. It's very true. I totally forgot about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. <laughs> it was in uh, American Pie, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's right. Uh, another sci-fi uh, animated series, Star Trek Prodigy, which I didn't know anything about until I saw the trailer for it. Looks interesting. Yeah, bunch of uh, ragtag aliens on a, a far distant planet Looks- uh, escape sort of a slavery type of situation. Right. Uh, find an old, uh, and it does take place after Voyager, uh, well after. Uh, yeah. But not quite to where Discovery is yet. In the future, or where um, Picard is, I think it might even be after Picard. Really, I think so. After Picard, um, huh? yes, because this uh, the the ship they find is is a pretty late model. Um, okay, and uh, 
it has a holographic interface, which is Catherine Janeway, uh, yes. voiced by Kate Mulgrew. Nice. Um, and, you know, ragtag yes. team events ensue. As as Admiral Janeway or as? Yes. Well, she's uh, she technically as the emergency command uh, hologram. Oh, fun. Uh yeah. Um, is it so? It would be after Lower Decks, then even farther. Yeah, I believe so. Okay, because Lower Decks is before Picard. Yes. Yeah, but after uh, what's that? After Voyager. Right. Uh, well, Voyager is, but Voyager is before. Um, what's that last crappy movie that I just watched last night? Not Insurrections. Uh, Nemesis? Nemesis. Yes. Voyager is before Nemesis. So, Nemesis is after Voyager. Lower Decks is after Nemesis. Yeah. So post-Nemesis, pre-Picard. Gotcha. Yeah. Fits in a timeline just perfect. Yeah, because that's where he takes command. That's where White Riker leaves the Enterprise for his... Uh, Titan. 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 Yeah. Yep. Too bad you don't actually see the Titan in that movie, but whatever. It's but fine. you do in Lower Decks. You do in Lower Decks, yeah. It would be nice to see the live version, though. Hmm. Um. Anyways, uh, it looks fun. It looks kind of like for a younger maybe audience. It, yeah. I mean, it's it's done by Nickelodeon, so yes. Okay. But I mean, I'm still gonna watch it because it looks pretty fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Uncharted, and then the last one, which is not really sci-fi, but uh, it's coming out. It's a movie called Ambulance. I suggested this. <laughs> yes, you did. And I'm, I'm both upset and delighted. <laughs> So it's a new Michael Bay film. There, there was a trailer for it before Dune for me. Oh, Same here. Yeah. yeah. All Same. right. Yeah, it is a, it's a new Michael Bay film. It is about... Michael it, it's It's pretty Michael... Like, what I got <laughs> about what the plot is in between the low telephoto shots and the, you know, taking pictures through helicopter blades and fucking but, explosions and gunshots. But they didn't have the slow standing up, spinning around, yeah, no, looking... They, Will he just he, he, he just didn't put it in the trailer? He didn't want to, he didn't want to blow that load too soon. He wants right. you to really appreciate right. it when you get to somebody standing up while the camera pans around them slowly. Yep, it's <laughs> it's in every Michael Bay film. It sure it's his is. it's his signature, it's and it. by God, I'm in love with it. And, I watched a supercut of all the times he's done it, and it was beautiful. And I, I, I cried. I know he's used it before Bad Boys, but every time I think of that that particular shot, I just think of Bad Boys. Or Bad Boys 2. He only did one thing before Bad Boys. Does that mean he used the low telephoto pan in the Got Milk commercial? Mm -hmm. Jesus. Did Did he? No, he did more before. Maybe not directing, but producing. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure, didn't he? I have no idea. I don't pay that much attention to the oeuvre of Michael Bay. I I thought he was a producer on Speed. Oh, yes, he was, actually. I knew that. La Vitesse says it should have been called yeah, in France. Well, which, but which, which you can tell fact, because... It's called Speed. Because you, uh, because you can tell by the music, because if you listen very closely to the music at the beginning of Speed, it is very close to... The, uh, pretty much the same as the music in uh, Bad Boys. That did, 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 did. That's because he, he loves reusing His, stuff. He, yeah. He, he, yeah. Anything he can. Right. Yep. So probably hired the same composer. Probably. Anyways. Um, anyways, so the Drink. the yeah the the minimal plot that we were able to figure out is that it's about this guy who has sort of this older brother figure in his life who's a bank robber and he goes to help well, his bank. They were robber. old military buddies. Okay, yeah. that's what it is. Okay, old military buddies and, and go and rob a bank. Jill and Hall's like, hey, I got a job. It'll pay you money. I know you need it. Yep. Um Easy in and out, and it turns out it's a it's a bank robbery job, and he convinces yeah. them to do it, and uh, things go awry as they do, and, and they there's end explosions up explosions, and in the title of the film, an, an ambulance. ambulance with an injured cop that they shot to to ensure that the cops don't like try and ram them off. The right? Road. Yeah, I'm not entirely not, convinced not that the they dumbest. shot the cop though, because that is, I believe, that is the cop that they that they is hit. it? Yeah. Okay, here's the twist I think that's going to happen. Because it seemed like <laughs> dun, that's dun, what dun. they were hinting at a little bit in the trailer, and I felt like it was really hard hard telegraphed. That isn't a cop. It's another bank robber who, that like by coincidence, these two different groups of bank robbers came to rob the same bank. Mm. I, see, uh, I, I felt like that go, was te- I telegraphed. I thought you were going to go somewhere a little more joker with it, where like he was like the, the setup guy. Like a, yeah. Oh sure, like, like all would, part of Gyllenhaal's plan. He was he was Maybe. he was a guy that was he was part of it, the inside job. Like he really is probably a real cop, 
but is also in on the bank heist. Mm-hmm. But I think he's in on the other bank heist that interrupted Gyllenhaal's bank heist. I think there's two bank heists. Yeah, oh, gotcha. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but it felt like that's what they were saying. I'll, I'll tell you after it comes to video. Like when, it comes, <laughs> when that movie comes to VHS, I'll watch it. <laughs> Jesus. VHS. <laughs> Oh, go fuck yourself, Nick. <laughs> Jesus. Um, when it comes to Blockbuster, I'll, I'll go rent it. <laughs> Drive to Oregon to get your the one VHS no, copy. You go, to the, you go to the uh, the the new uh, self done like the uh, borrow book. They do a bar, the borrow Blockbuster or whatever it is it's called. But it's the same thing where it's like games and videos. You put and it's, people make these their own little stands out of. Oh, it's like the little free library? Yeah. Uh, if you go to Heroic Goods and Games on Facebook, you can find their link to the Blockbuster uh, borrow a movie, borrow a book thing. Uh, but Neat. it's not books. It's for video games and, and uh, movies. Okay. But yeah, people are popping these little things up. Yeah. They're great. And they're painted the exact same way. And they'll actually, That's if you go fun. to the website, they'll send you all like the decals. Like the spray paint decals and all that shit. So For can, Blockbuster. So it yeah. looks exactly like the Blockbuster. And they logo. give you the Pantone colors that you need. They tell you what colors you yeah. can. Yeah, because they can't send like paint through the mail, but you can sure. buy that color at whatever paint store. You right, 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 right. Anyways. Neat. Drink. Um, yeah, Ambulance. It looks stupid, and it looks like a Michael <laughs> Bay film, and boy, I am upset that I'm excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll watch when I'm ironing my shirts. Uh, I, have, I have one real quick before we get to the, the DC fandom. Um uh, Resident Evil. Oh yeah, released their trailer. They did. Oh uh, yeah, the one of two. Ow. Um, this is the one that is going to theaters. Uh, this is the one that has um, oh, the guy plays Luther from Umbrella Academy as yeah, Wesker. As Wesker. Um, it <laughs> it looks like they took Resident Evil one and Resident Evil two and said, "All right, let's make this a movie. Slap all the characters together." Do some actual shots from the game, uh, and and not just do our own pretend thing. Like they're they're making the video game the movie. Yeah, um, sure. Which, not like which, the first one that missed the mark by a little bit, but was still good. It was good. I agree. Um, Other than the house, the creepy house in the middle of nowhere. Uh, but I I think they're gonna they're gonna do that Again. too. Uh, yeah, right. Good. I I remember the first. Resident Evil when I got it, it, it even, scared the shit out of me. It even looked like it had like some prequel stuff that kind of touched base yeah. on like, um, like almost like a Resident Evil Seven sort of a thing, right? Um, right. But it's it looked good. Yeah. Um. I, my my hopes are at least uh, peaked. Yeah. Um. I'll, I'll go see it. I'll go see it in theaters too. I I think they've they've finally figured out something of a formula to video game movies. Mm-hmm. So, because, uh, I mean, the Detective Pikachu was good. Sonic was good. Um, I, I think they're getting their shit together. Still haven't seen those movies. Sorry. I've seen parts of them, but not them completely from beginning to end. Anyways. Uh, yeah, Resident Evil looks good. What was, um, Rob, did you see the Resident Evil? I didn't, actually. I didn't know there was a trailer until mm-hmm. you just said something. I feel like maybe you said something earlier and I missed it. It was, in the, it was in the group save thing. Was it? Damn it. It's okay. You're fired. I just, all right, bye. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I only saved him for everyone to watch. You did. Uh, what was the DC fandom? So DC, DC fandom. Um, what are you breaking? Up? So much I know. Just, just, just the, the worst exit too. of all time. <laughs> so, uh, so they unveiled a, a few projects that are coming up. Okay. Uh, yep. Obviously, we got the new trailer to Batman. Which yep. is good. Which, uh, Lots yeah, more Colin Farrell. A lot more Colin Farrell. And it's, and it's funny because like... Uh, um, uh, I I kind of leaned over to say her, I'm like I can't believe what they did to Colin Farrell in this movie. She's like, "Where's Colin Farrell in this movie?" I'm like, "He's Penguin." She's like, "Shut your fucking <laughs> whore mouth!" Hilariously, <laughs> um, yesterday. So we're doing a watch through of Scrubs, and hilariously, like yesterday, I we got to the Colin Such Farrell a episode. Good episode. This is so mm-hmm. good. Um, and and a little bit more, a, a little bit more Riddler, and a lot bit more Catwoman. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, so much Zoe Kravitz. Zoe Kravitz is is. Is absolutely slaying this role. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It looked, it, I mean, I'm, obviously we're all excited for it, but it it made me more excited for the movie. So yeah, it I looks am, really fucking good. I'm, I'm excited a, to see Paul Dano. I'm in a he place looks like he's oh, great. He is such a good boy. I I love him. Yeah. Um, and seeing him in something really big excites me. Yeah. Um, and I, and for all you fucking uh, uh, 
Patterson? Yeah, Patterson? Patterson. Robert Pattinson. Pattinson. Robert Pattinson. 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 For all you Pattinson haters out there, fuck you. I mean, this looks, it looks great. It looks good for him. I feel like the it's, more trailers and footage we've seen, the less you start to hear from the patents and haters. So. You do, but I'm just is nice. But there's still going to be, of course, there will always well, of course be. They, will. they hate him because of a role he did, not even right. exactly. one role. Right. That he hates more than they do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. True. His, yeah. They're like, his indie boo. career is real good. They're like, boo, Robert Pattinson, Twilight sucks. He's like, I know, what of it? <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. Have you seen any of my indie films, which are really fucking good? Yeah. What's well, an indie film? You can get fucked. Yeah. <laughs> so Batman. Got my Batman trailer. It, yeah, looks real good. It does. Um, they, also, they released just an image so far, but uh, they're doing the Blue Beetle. Oh. Um, and, and very what is this? They're doing a Blue Beetle movie. <gasps> I missed this. Yeah, all they've done is released one image, um, but he's looking pretty dope. Is it? It's Jaime, isn't it? Yes. 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 They're doing Jaime. Yes. No offense to Ted, but mm-hmm. like Jaime. But the, yeah, they're going. They're going Egyptian. Um, nice. And they good. Yeah. Very excited. Mm-hmm. Um. And then they released, it was a very short snippet, but they released a, a, kind of a teaser for Black Adam. Okay. Oh, yeah. With uh, the, the Rock coming down and absolutely taking what appeared to be like a private military group. Really? To just absolute pound town. Yep. All right. Um, just <laughs> disintegrating them. and uh, the, the, Not less sexual. Nope. <laughs> uh Really bending them over, and they're, they're just taking it. They were really oh, we're stuck so- between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're still going. Good. Oh, we're still good, recording good. the whole time. Good, yeah, good, awesome. Good. Uh, but yeah, it uh, it was a very cool little teaser. Sure. Um, and then the the last one was the Flash, um, which I don't know if you've watched that one yet. The it's a trailer for the Flash for the Flash for the movie the Flash for the movie the Flash. I have not seen that. So it had a little introduction by Ezra Miller, okay. Miller who was doing like his his. His <laughs> very best uh, sub boy routine. He was wearing like a collar, and awesome. his hair was all fluffed up, and uh, I was very proud of him. <laughs> sure. Uh, uh, but then he introduced the trailer where it was, um, uh, you know, it was you can do anything you want. I don't know why you don't. Uh, sort of a, a thing to oh sure um, to him, and so it's you know kind of a flashpoint thing where he he kind of goes back in time, goes multiverse. Um, Saves and his the, mommy. The, the 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 trailer ends with, um, uh, you you just see a Batman uh, silhouetted step into frame, and he has the long ears. Yes, you can tell who it is. Yes. and then you see a, a Batmobile in a very specific shape, covered by a sheet, and just as he's pulling off the sheet, it cuts. It cuts. Ah. Oh! Yeah. Uh, so oh. a, a very cool teaser to Just, uh, to the the shittiest Batman movie ever made, but I'm I'm, I'm really glad they're gonna. I'm, I'm just kidding. That's Batman and Robin. Uh, yeah, I don't. <laughs> yeah, it is. I don't. I don't care for the Tim Burton ones. Followed I, quickly I, by I, Batman Forever. I think he wouldn't know a good Batman idea if it if it if he pulled a batarang out of his ass. I really don't. He was the worst choice for it. But had the best um, I like Batman Returns. I think um, it's actually pretty good. And and I like Batman Returns a little bit better, but yeah. it's still not great. Um, I just liked how dark it was. That's about all I liked about Batman, it. I mean, they've all been dark. Yeah. If you, want, if, well, you want, if you want a dark Batman movie, there's a new one coming out pretty soon. Yeah. yeah uh, but I, I feel like this will this will breathe fresh air into into that particular slice of the Batman IP. Um, okay. I I don't think Michael Keaton was right for Batman then. Um, I think he would have made a better Joker. Sure. Um, when he's like, come on, let's go nuts. It's like, fuck, he's, he's, he was a terrible Batman. Um, but he was still, but at that time. But, his- I, but I think now, uh, seeing him, I think he's perfect for an older Batman. For, yeah, this is, this is why I'm absolutely for the idea uh, that um, the Batman is actually uh, a secret underground uh, super hush-hush Batman Beyond film. That Robert Pattinson is actually Terry McGinnis, and that would, Michael yeah. Keaton is is old Bruce Wayne in that movie. But Please not, let that happen. They're not. They're not. They're not connecting at all. And plus, I don't give a shit. I want that. And plus, Alfred's still alive, and he's being played by Andy Serkis. I understand. Which we I also just, got more of the. In the oh yeah, yeah, we did. That's true. Uh, but yeah, it, uh, it it was very exciting to watch. Um, 
so I, I suggest watching some of the things that I save to to our torch. Yeah, that's fair. Um, fucking. Um, fucking. See, but I think they made Keaton Batman because he was still before he became before he started taking roles that were more evil or more sinister or more complicated. He was still good boy, uh, Michael Keaton. You know, like Mister Mom, and I mean he's he did. Beetlejuice before he did, but that was Batman. comedic. It wasn't like dark. I'm, I'm thinking more like a Birdman, sure, more like Vulture. You know, yeah, like multiplicity. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> too much Michael Keaton. A lot of too much Michael Keaton. Uh, but I did like Mr. Mom as a kid. I don't. I've watched it recently as an adult. I don't know why I liked it so much. There's really no plot to that movie at all. I mean, I, I, I liked the, 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 the Burton Batman movie as a kid, but that's because I was a kid and didn't know what good things were. Right. I like the, I like, still like that. It's still my favorite Batmobile and my favorite Batwing. It, it, that Batmobile is legitimately toit. Yeah, and my favorite Batwing, too. And they, they crashed. The, the Batwing from the Batman, the Tim Burton Batman yeah. series, wasn't that shown first in Batman Forever? No, shown first in the original in the, the 19, first Batman movie. We remember, don't you? He flies it. Over he the flies thing? it up, <gasps> up by the moon, and it makes the bat oh, that's signal, right, and then it comes it back down, and then Joker pulls out a laughably long magnum <laughs> and yeah. just shoots one shot and takes the whole fucking thing down. Right? Yeah, and then that's right. Collapses, kaleidoscope ca- collapses the barrel down, which was too much prints in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> you said before. Yeah. So, anything else with any of that before we get to our vacation stoof? Uh, there was another trailer for the the new Suicide Squad game that looked good, and, oh, and, and a new trailer for the the Knights of Gotham. Oh. I apparently missed everything from DC Fandom, and uh, I'm so sorry. Video games, and, and those both looked pretty dope because you got more of like the the story of the two games. Nice. I might actually buy the Suicide Squad game. It does look fun. I'm gonna play fucking nothing but King Shark. <laughs> of course you are. Maybe a little, maybe a little Harley. Uh, I'll definitely play Harley. Yeah, that sounds um, right. I, uh, bu- 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 I, if, did you say between that or Battlefield? Because a bunch of the guys at work want to buy Battlefield. Like, uh, yeah, get I, Suicide Squad and play with me. Okay. There you go. I'll yeah, go, maybe I'll get them both. Or get them both. <laughs> or get them you made both. it sound like you had to choose. No, I might have to choose because they come out roughly the same. Suck. When's when's Suicide Squad come out? I, time. Because <laughs> <laughs> Battlefield comes out November nineteenth, but it's still heavy. Oh, after that. I don't think Suicide Squad is coming out until probably at least March. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll... Mm. Well, I'm going to wait to buy Battlefield because the, even in the beta right now, that's still being glitchy, so... Yeah, all it says is 2022, so... Gotcha. Yeah. All right, so... Sometime next year. Um, I thought it sounds very exciting and very cool and very fun. Um, and you know what else is exciting and fun and cool? Our vacations. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there we go. They were exciting, fun, and cool. Should we just go in the order in which we took vacations, or how should we do this? So then that would go... Me, Kevin. No. Kevin, you go, went before, didn't I? Didn't you? It would go yeah. Kevin, Nick, and then me. Yeah. 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 Kevin, you want to start? So we'll start. So this will be like a nerd grabby uh, vacation yeah. recap. Yeah. But we're going to try to shorten it. We're not going to... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I went to Disney. It was cool. Nick? <laughs> I went to Vegas. It was cool. Rob? I went to <laughs> okay. Disney. You guys got uh, 45 minutes? <laughs> 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 Fuck you! I was going to do the exact same joke as you guys. <laughs> he's out of line, but he's right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Come back. Uh, but yeah, we uh, we drove down uh, like we did last time, um, and that uh, that was an event of its own because there was a lot of people in that vehicle. But uh, we got there. the The place we got to was 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 pretty cool. Um, yeah, it was like a you stay like just outside of Walt Disney. We do. We we tend to do uh, like uh, Airbnb type oh, of places. Okay. Oh, nice. sure. Um, nice, nice. That I absolutely recommend. Okay. Uh, next time you go down, because you you just get more space. Like we had our own private pool, and which had like a hot tub attached, and oh. ooh, an outdoor kitchen area with a flat top and a grill. <gasps> Shut up. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, I, I made some fucking food on those I, bad boys. Nice. I thought you were like in some sort of like bungalow resort type place. No, it was it was like a like a six bedroom like home. Nice. Um, 
I not well, not that bad. Um, mostly because um, uh, and he made the sorry. Money gesture I made the money gesture. I apologize. Uh, because Visual. Uh, okay, hang on. Anyways. Very early into COVID, uh, Saber had uh, travel plans to go to Texas for um, spring break. And okay, it ended up getting canceled, and so she got a credit back, and so she Ooh. used that to get. Oh, so we nice. got this huge place for well, basically nothing. Nice. nice. Um, and yeah, so that place was very very cool. Um. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, Kai and, and Sabra got uh, sick right at the beginning of the trip. Oh. Uh, yeah, they got uh, kind of a, a, a sinusy issue. Both tested negative for COVID, sure, so that sure. was good because um, they that was the first thing they did. But uh, so we ended up going to. Um, uh, Oh God! Why, why am I blanking? We we did Hollywood Studios second on Friday. We did Epcot first, and that was on Tuesday. Um, Epcot was nice because it was quiet on a Monday. Uh, it was Tuesday. Oh, tu- oh yes, yes. Um, but I mean, even for because like the fiftieth anniversary thing is going on in the Food and Wine Festival, it mm-hmm. was just it's the quietest I've seen it. Yeah. Um, huh. We uh, so we had uh, lunch plans at France. Okay. Um, Chefs de France? Yep. And nice. uh, dinner plans at Nine Dragons in China. Oh, lovely. Uh, where we got the I got the ribs there. Holy shit. Yeah, they're good. Oh, my God. Were these the Szechuan ones? Uh, these are the... <laughs> yes, and I'm uh, I'm still thinking about them. Nice. But, uh, yeah, we got to do the, the whole world showcase. Mm-hmm. Test track? And uh, we didn't do test track. Oh, um, do you still have that ride? Yeah. They do. And it's, Aerosmith. It's, it's still one of my favorites. Aerosmith is at Hollywood Studios. Oh. Um, but uh, we did do Mission Space twice. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> uh, it's my, my favorite thing in the whole wide world. But yeah, Epcot was, it was just a nice and chill day. It was hotter than shit. I wanted to die. But there were yeah. plenty, of, plenty of places with air conditioning and, right. and yeah. that kind of thing. So, yeah. so that was nice. And then on uh, Wednesday... Uh, we got our tattoos. Mm. Everybody's turned out great. Uh, Saber got the, the 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 Star Wars Phoenix mm-hmm. emblem. Yep, nice. Um, Kai got uh, some Studio Ghibli stuff. Ghibli, oh, nice. Ghibli, whichever it is. Um, you got uh, t- t- Totoro, 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 and um, the the little flame guy from Howl's Moving Castle. Oh, sure. Uh, they got that one fixed because the the first time they got it, it was a little goo. Mm. Um, uh, and then um, Kaylin got uh, like a tarot card. Oh, cool. Uh, and I got the, the Valkyrie symbol from Thor Ragnarok, and I got very, very infected. Yeah. Um, it, it tried to tear my fucking arm off. Uh, yeah. So I am I'm very disappointed by it. Mm. That's too bad. I'm sorry, man. Yeah. It, um, it, was, it was not cheap, obviously. No. no. And yeah. we, we talked about this before mm-hmm. we went on air, um, and both Nick and I – Asked a few questions about the tattoo and the artist, and some. And I'm going to go ahead and say that we're not going to repeat them here. If you would like to know what we said, ask one of us. We can. I'm happy to answer, but like, I'm not going to uh, go on our live and public podcast <laughs> and say what I said because I'm not looking for a lawsuit. Right. Yeah. Well, that's why they have you sign those waivers. Yeah. Yeah. So. But that is what it is. I'll I'll get it fixed by our main man Luke and yeah, yeah. Uh, lesson learned, I suppose. I, I it does it. it I just, will say it sounds like you re, uh, you signed a contract in bad. The faith. thing the thing that, that well the thing that makes me think it was it was the ink is that the black is fine. Mm-hmm. The black healed perfectly. It was everywhere that the purple was that got infected and rejected. Mm. So I really do think it was the ink. Okay. Um. So you know, fuck me, I guess. Uh, but Thursday we went to Disney Springs. Um, I got uh, I got a Hydra Stomper, um, and nice. I got a Resistance coat. Yeah, the, you did. The, yeah, you the, did. The green one, and it and it fits. And I think a few months ago it definitely would not have. Sure. Um, and and that was nice. Um, yeah. And it's kind of become my fall coat now. It's very comfy. It's, it looks very comfy. It's a it's a very nice you jacket. Put that on it. <laughs> oh, it's kidding. That's mine. Uh, what? It's, mine now. it's, it's Kevin's now. <laughs> what is it? Let me see that. Um, and then, oh, cool. And, good. And, <laughs> <laughs> um, I forgot I had that. And we had just the best fucking seafood boil. 
that night. Where? We went because to this place my called, go go to closed during the pandemic. Juicy and Crab. Was Juicy the name. and Crab. Okay. Juicy and Crab. Okay. And it was incredible. Like okay. the best seafood boil I've had at a restaurant ever. Wow. wow. The we got like we got lobster in it and shrimp sure, and sure, scallops. Sure, sure. The scallops were fucking perfect. Yeah, we did the mix of the three sauces and it was you know it comes in this big poofy bag and you just kind of kinda tear into it and yeah. it right, was, right 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 right. It was awesome. Everything was crawfish. Did you do crawfish? Yes. Okay. The sausage. I'm listening. This is not something that I normally like go out of my way for in a boil. The sausage was amazing. What? It had no right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Was this andouille or was it like? It was like an andouille sausage. And okay, it, it no. was the, because the it's texture awesome. was perfect. Okay. Um, a lot of times when you get sausage in boils, it can be kind of mushy. Yep. Um, but this was, it was the, the perfect tender. It was ridiculous. It was, <laughs> they were just these thick slices. Okay. So it sounds nice. like it was probably only once milled and then I believe so. Yeah. yeah. Once milled and then cooked to oblivion, which isn't a bad thing in this case. Like no it's once milled, it's gotta be cooked to a no, no, I don't, I don't believe it was uh, the, the cooked to oblivion kind. It was, Ooh. it was just, it was, um, I, I think they just knew the timing of everything. Excellent. Uh, Cause the, the only thing that, that wasn't great was the corn, but I've, I've never had a fishbowl where the corn is, no, Not been mushy. That's fair. But um, yeah. And then Friday, of course, we had uh, Hollywood Studios, and that was a difficult day. Yeah? Yeah. Um, what well, was of, the end of your trip? And Well, a, a lot of things didn't go right. We were supposed yeah. to have like this tour, um, but Ooh. it was booked through like a third party, and we couldn't find the guy, and we were trying to get a hold of the person who booked it for us, and we couldn't. Oh, no. Um, and so a lot of the stuff we wanted to do, we couldn't because it was, it was even hotter that day. Yeah. Uh, and we were all just, we were all just kind of miserable and Hollywood studios doesn't have as many hidey holes as Epcot does. It does not. No. Um, and so we were just, it was a lot of crankiness and, and, yeah. and, and hurt, you know, kind of, uh, you know, sort of in your emotions about the fact that the, the thing we had planned out didn't go through right. And, uh, like the rise of resistance was like a two hour wait. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Ugh. Uh, more than and um, like we wanted to do because we got to the Millennium Falcon one really early. We Smugglers, got, we yeah. got through in like fifteen minutes. Yeah, um, and then we wanted to do it again. It was already an hour, and I feel yeah. bad because I, uh, you know, Saber and I had talked about doing the pilot thing together, and then I wanted to do it with Blake, but we never got that chance because like waiting in line is super hard for him because his back sucks. And yeah, um, I just I I feel bad because I know he really wanted to do the pilot thing with me and. So who yeah. flew it original? Who flew it the first time? Uh, Saber and I did. So you got to fly it, huh? I did get to fly it. Yeah. Um, as was a matter of fact, I was in the chewy spot, so I got to I got to do the hyperdrive. Was it as cool as it? It was exactly as cool as you think. <laughs> <laughs> like being in that pilot seat and hitting the hyperdrive. Oh my god! It's really satisfied. So when B three when B three E goes to uh, to Florida, let Nick gets to sit in the pilot seat because there will be six of us. Well, there'll be five of us, but. Yes. Yes, and, uh, and if there's five, they don't they don't sit you with uh, with a rando good. unless there's unless there's a single person. But put that fucker yeah. in it. Honestly, the two best bots are pilot and engineer. Gunner is only okay. <laughs> okay. I believe that, uh, but I haven't done gunner yet, so I'd, I'd be willing to do that if you two wanted to. to fly. I I don't want to fly again. Well, then you and me, baby. Yeah, <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. We're gonna crash that one. So yeah, I, <laughs> when I went down, I I. I, I this is the first time we've been to Hollywood Studios since uh, Batu opened, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, I we we were the pilots, and it's hard. First of all, it's hard. Second of all, jo- Joanna doesn't do similar later rides. We found out. Ah. Uh, <laughs> so did, did you guys do Star Tours? No. Oh, okay. I don't yeah. think she would have fun on that one. I don't think uh, she would either. But it's awesome because uh, we also <laughs> they've updated a, it again, haven't they? Yeah, and okay, so that's the thing. That's the next thing I was getting to. So we did the star tours, and I didn't realize they now had different scenarios depending upon which pod group you go into. Oh. Uh, so we went through we went through it twice because the wait wasn't very long. The first time we got the um, a new hope one. Oh. Um, but the sec and then the second time we got the Rise of Skywalker one. Oh, yeah. Uh, so because I had I had kind of talked up the Rise of Skywalker one, and we got like an old one. I was like, ah, it's the old one, whatever. 
which is funny because they had BB-8 sending the message for the Rise of Skywalker one. The last time I did it, it was Billy D. Williams. Uh, this time it wasn't Billy D. Williams, so I think they didn't want to pay him anymore. No, <laughs> That's fair. Very, very true. Um, uh, are you for all your? Just as a quick question, for all your rides, are you still doing like the fat? Do they still do like the separate fast pass versus just wait in line? So here's the thing: okay. we came right in the limbo of them not doing fast pass anymore, and. The, literally the week before Genie Plus started, where you could pay to do the Fast Pass, and I—that is my biggest regret. I wish we had been there when when Rob and Joanna were. Yep. Uh, because a, then we could have done um, the Smugglers Run again. I would have paid whatever money they would have yeah. asked to skip that line. Do you have to do that for um, every different park, or is it just one? Every different park. Every different park. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then. Uh, and then that way, maybe we could have gotten together. And yeah, maybe you could have joined us on that amazing uh, boil, and because uh, uh-huh. we would have invited you. Mm-hmm. So, so my my boil place closed down during the pandemic, and that's too bad because we had happened. We lucked into finding them the last time we were down mm-hmm. there, and we were very excited. Like we had a day planned, we had everything. But we we're like, we're going to go to Karen's this day, and we're going to leave Animal Kingdom earlier because Animal Kingdom sucks. Um, I'm kidding. It, it does, doesn't. It does kind of suck. It doesn't suck. It's, it's just, just there's not a lot to do all day there. You, it's a like, half park for me. Yeah, you, you do it. And you're Joanna like, loves it. And then by like two p.m., the, you're like, well, I'm good forever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. And we left Animal Kingdom about five or six, but we're not on me yet. <laughs> um. Uh. So yeah, but I mean, it, it finished strong. We got to do our our lightsaber thing again, uh, which yeah. uh, the experience is still incredible. Yeah. Um I got my I did the power and control one. Okay. Uh, all four of us got purple sabers. <laughs> <laughs> um and then uh Sabra Kai and I did droid builds. Sure. Um she did she an R two unit and then Kai and I did BB units. Um and I've named mine BB thirty seven. He's In a big a blue ball. Um <laughs> and I and I love him very much. <laughs> um yeah, the, the the week the week ended a lot better than than it started. Um, the 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 start was rough, um, and and I, I will say that um, that Hollywood Studios was rough, but um, the drive back was a lot smoother. And, good, yeah. um, and everybody had a really good time. Did you do it in two days like we did? The yes, we okay. did, we did do a stop overnight, and it's okay. funny cause, because because uh, Rob and Joanna were on their way. At uh, the same time, we were headed back. Yeah, so we were trying to see if we could meet up for dinner, but it was just, it, and, it wouldn't have made it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did you at least pass each, wave each other on the highway? I don't know. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't we remember. Able, you know, we weren't able to, to kind of coordinate that. I'm not in 100% sure we took the same route either. No, I don't think so. You guys went through Chicago, right? No, 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 no. Oh. Who wants to go through Chicago? Oh, we did, we, so you, you took the Iowa route? Uh, we through St. Louis, we did. Yeah, that's the one oh, we okay. took. Oh, well, well, because on the way there, you don't have to go through Chicago no. to no, take the Wisconsin can... route. Oh, uh, no. cause you can take Wisconsin, then come down yeah. uh, outside of it. Um, it's like a, it's a different right, road. You, right, take, right, but right, right, you, would, right. you end up going through like Bloomington and shit. Oh, okay. Well, we took the Iowa route, which was better, I think. Yeah. But sweet. Um, but yeah, and I so I, I I brought back some some nifty gifties for people, and I got some nifty gifties myself. Yeah. Um, yeah. So not just the jacket, but I got um, I got my build a saber. I got a ray saber. Um, jury's out on how I feel about it. Sure. Um, yeah. I I do like it. And yeah. I like how heavy it is, but there are some things that I wish were different. Um, and then uh, the I got a hydra stomper. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which is fucking huge. So I've added that to my not Iron Man, uh, Iron Men uh, <laughs> collection, nice. such as Iron Heart, Infamous Iron Man. Right. Um, I need to get the Punisher War Machine figure. Uh, but yeah, it was a it was a it was a good trip. We ate lots of good food, nice. uh, saw yeah. many good things, and, and and had a good time. Yeah, that's good. Sounds like fun. Uh, yeah, we should all go there at one time. Well, you know what we should do for a video series instead of video po- vod podcast or video podcasting is we should do a, v- a B3E. Reviews nerdy stuff. And then we could like totally talk about our uh, review of items and actually sure. show people. Sure, you know what I mean. Maybe we'll do that in the future. I'm yes. not against the travel series either. I'm still saying we should do the B3 tours, Orlando. Real Orlando. quick, I can't remember. Do you have a a, a chargeable saber? Yes. Didn't you get like a an, an ultra saber, a saber forge? In the, no, it's a generic. Do you have one. the charger for it? 
because I think I have to plug this in to reset it after I, I bumped it in a weird way. That is a good question that I don't have the answer to. Okay, well, no worries. Sorry. All right. Uh, is that everything? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, while you were in Vegas, or while you were in Florida, <laughs> I went to Vegas. There it is. Uh, we were there for six days. Um, I saw your big win on the penny slot. Fuck yeah, bitches. It wasn't <laughs> as big as Brian's, but whatever. Um, but How much did you make off the But the proportionately penny was probably equal, if that makes sense. So he yeah, it was about a G, more. wasn't it? It was 1,200. Yeah. 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 On the penny slots? Yeah. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah, you. That's a good win. You're playing. Yeah. Uh, well, I wasn't even playing the top the top rolls either. It was on uh, the buck fifty. So every roll was a buck fifty. I just kept hitting and hitting, and then I got to the bonus round. And was, by the way, it was a little shop of horrors game. Which Perfect. I thought awesome. Was ironic, so I was, awesome. I told Brian the secret was you got to sing to it because it plays various uh, parts of the song. <laughs> so like, little shop, little shop of horrors. Little shop of horrors is why you have Megan and Ian in your life. Oh, I love them. Well, then that's why it, it was just pure fate. Yeah. Uh, and I do like it's the movie version, not the the Broadway version. So it was obviously you know. Um, yeah. Rick Moranis. Rick Moranis. Yeah. And like the 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 plant was the the bonus round, and so it was very fun. So, anyways, yeah, we went to Vegas. We stayed in the Golden Nugget. Which was uh, the, my first time on Fremont Street. I love it there. It's so stupid. It's very it's my different. Favorite. If I was, let me rephrase. It's very different uh, now. Being and I hate to say how you know my, being my age. If I was like twenty years younger, it'd probably be great. But I just didn't like the dude bro fall down drunkiness and I'm not talking about all of the young bachelors and bachelorettes that were there. I'm talking about adults. See like, that Fremont Street is like old people Vegas, if you ask me. Yeah, but the old people that were falling stumbling down drunk were the old people. Exactly. Like, mom and daughter were carrying them back to like dad back to the hotel room. Ooh, perfect. No. So so yeah, not so very, much party that's, hardy that's, that's it's Vegas right alcohol there, alcoholism woo. There you go. Yeah, but yeah. there's there's party hardy too. I mean there's plenty of bachelorette parties sure. and loud talking and and then the uh, the lack of a better term the the vagrants I guess I don't know yep. the oh sure mm-hmm. they just come through the casino like they don't like they don't care and then they come up to you and ask you for money and I'm like get the fuck away from me like I don't nope sorry then yes I'm gambling but and then the one guy who who was like trying to give me this whole story about him being a diabetic and then he shows me well I even have the I even have the like the insulin pen and he shows me this thing and I go. That's not an insulin pen. He goes, yeah, it is. I go, no. I have type friends who are type one diabetics. I know what insulin pens look like. It doesn't look like it, buddy. Sorry. It was like an epi pen. Yeah. It, awesome. It was not. It was not insulin. I can tell you that for sure. Uh, you know, from my very limited knowledge of type one diabetes and insulin, I know for a fact that that was not an insulin pen. But anyways, well, I mean, in his defense, yes, some of them do look similar, but they do. I, I, I'll, I'll take your word for it. I'm not going to argue with you on. Someone who may right. or may not have been diabetic, right. and I don't care if they are. Right. So, yeah, we stayed there. Uh, it was like six days, five nights. Uh, it was fun. Um, saw a lot of good. We didn't eat as many good places as we wanted to. We wanted to go back to a rib place that we didn't go back to. But the first day we were there, we went to this uh, in the restaurant there or in the hotel. There was a, a Mexican joint that was kind of like a fancy um, Acapulco, for lack of a better term. And the food was good. Uh, but the the better the better was the service and the the waitress because I kind of dribbled some shit on my shirt and I was like damn it but then she came back with like the glass of like soda water and was like here you go and I'm like well that was really cool and she was super fun to have as a waitress um, but the fact that she like I've never had a waiter or waitress bring you something to help you get a stain out of your shirt cool it was very nice for her so he gave her a huge tip. <laughs> I'm not cutting that pause at all. No, nor should you. Um, as far as like nerdy things, uh, I'm trying so to. So you went to the the Avenger Station. Yeah, yep. we went to the Avenger Station. They totally nerded out there. I, love I mean, it, there. it was so cool. It was very cool. They say a lot of it was used on the the, the set and mm-hmm. the screen and everything. So everything that was behind glass was was on set and. <laughs> Brian, God bless his little heart. He's like, oh, they got all the suits from Iron Man. I said, mm, no, they didn't, because then they would just be a blue suit, because those suits were all digital. The, the later suits were? The later suits were, yeah. The later suits, right. Because I went, Robert Downey originally started in them, but then by the end he was wearing like hockey pads, and that was all he would wear. Yeah. Um, but anyways, it was still cool, and like the little interactive stuff. 
<laughs> and of course, this is they probably made this adventure thing, and it's kind of interactive. Um, shortly after it was before Infinity War for sure. Okay, uh, because it was still mentioning things about things that there was already a conclusion to, and talking about Hydra, and you're like, well, it's and oh, and Shield, and Colby Smolder is doing this video introduction in her Shield uniform. I'm like, well, hey, you're not part of Shield anymore, but okay, um, sure. <laughs> And then when they have the motion, he did was great. That was my uh, favorite part. There. The thing that they have for uh, blah 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 blah. What the? Why can't I think of this? Interesting. Same. Who's the new Captain America? Oh, the the John Walker U.S. agent. No, the new Anthony Mackie. Yeah, oh, yeah. Sam Wilson, the Falcon. The Falcon. Thank you. They're the Falcon outfit. And I just wanted to get like a little sharp and go screech out, cut out the Falcon, and put Captain America, but I didn't. Good. Because he's technically Captain America. Yes, he is. But their costumes are cool. Uh, all little things are cool. We also went to the Mob Museum. I w- I've, I've been there twice. I wanted to do it twice, and I haven't done it twice. I'm very mad at myself. Um, it was cool. We, we I was kind of mad that they you know, they sell us these tickets, and they forget to tell us that the second floor is off limits because it was a private party on the second floor. So we didn't get to see the second floor. But the third floor and the first floor were really cool. And then the speakeasy in the basement plus the... Um, there was a a, a, a moonshine tasting uh, that they they make their own moonshine. They had a tasting Ooh. of it, so it was very cool. And the lady who did the did the educational part was a former teacher, and she was so much fun, and she made it so enjoyable. Uh, and it was great. Um, and the the speakeasy was really cool. A lot of good drinks. Uh, what else did we do? What else did I do on my vacation? Uh, I went to Zach Bagan's Horror Museum. And if you don't know who Zach Baggins is, he's on Ghost Adventures. He's kind of like the leader guy that uh, dark hair, glasses. Usually, is kind of does all the voiceover work. Um, and this place was Bunch of grifters. <laughs> yeah, I don't have terrestrial TV, so I don't know who that is at all. Um, <laughs> Could you have said that any dumber? <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. <laughs> So hang on, give me a second. I'll think of a I'll way. Be, before I get to that, we did also go to the pawn shop, the, the gold gold oh, silver right, pawn right. shop from the TV show. Did oh, you, cool. Did you see any shows at all? No, no, oh. no. I still haven't seen this Vegas show. I want to either want to see the Michael Jackson one or O, which I've heard are both phenomenal. O is very good. Um, Absinthe, I can't, I can't recommend enough. Yeah, I've heard that's good as well. Um, it's a very intimate burlesque show. But the Saturday Ooh. before, I did a show at the AIM Center, which was the Australian Bee Gees who are based out of Las Vegas, and three of the guys that were part of that particular traveling group are out of that that group. So I was like, oh, that's cool. I'm going to Vegas in a couple of days. They're like, all right, sweet. They're like, if you want to come see our show, I said, I just kind of did. <laughs> so I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I just literally ran your, ran your monitors for you, but uh, thank you, though. I appreciate it. Um, we did go to the Golden Pond, Silver Pond Shop. Very cool. A lot of really, really cool stuff. Overpriced a little bit. Oh, yeah. Um, you know? And you know whatever, and Chum Lee came out. We saw him for half a second. Like I couldn't get my phone out fast enough to take a picture, but he was there. And we bought and, and my housemate Brian. Uh, he bought this really cool Rat Pack picture of the Rat Pack, um, and then it's got some poker chips and the cards, and then like all their autographs. And we thought at first they were all real until we asked the guy. We're like, "Are those all real?" He's like, "No, sadly they're not." I'm like, "Oh fuck, that'd been cool, but probably wouldn't have been more a than lot more money. Yeah, <laughs> a lot more money." But it's a very cool picture. We're going to hang it up in our bar. We haven't hung it up yet, but we're going to hang it up in our bar. Um, I didn't buy anything there because it was just like, ugh. And then we went to the toy store that they talk about, Rogue Toys, uh, that the, the expert comes from. Uh, and there was a poster in there signed by Stan Lee and John Favreau. But they were, and it was a, like a, an original arty, art look, or hand-drawn looking Iron Man, uh, the first Iron Man movie poster. And it looked really cool. And I was like, how much is that? They're like, well... We don't have a price on yet because we're still authenticating John Favreau's autograph. We know that that's Stan Lee's, but John Favreau's are waiting. I'm like, so it means it'll be really expensive if it is. And they're like, yeah. I'm like, okay. But I did buy a cool <laughs> glass that has an 8-bit Mario etched in on, on it, like a, just a pint glass. Right. Yeah. Uh, so back, back to Zach Bagan's Horror Museum. <sighs> this place is not, honestly, for the faint of heart. I'm not even going to lie a little bit. Like, Those filthy fucking Bagginses. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. That was the a sh- solid joke, the Sarah. Shire, I appreciate the shire that. The this is not. Uh, it is 
it's very fascinating, but they have I mean, if you watch the show and if you believe in the the, the believe in what they talk about, which they more or less prove what they do, uh it's spooky and scary as fuck. Um, cuz they have real haunted items there and they have real items from people like it's fascinating because they have like cool items that from real people like they have the jack Kevorkian van where all those people committed suicide they have stuff from ted bundy they have stuff from a lot of stuff from charles manson they have wyatt earp's bible they have uh uh john dillinger's pistol they have the stuff that was in bonnie and clyde's trunk of their car when they got murdered uh and then they have a bunch of very haunted items that they've shown on the show including the Dybbuk box. And if you don't know about the Dybbuk box, go look it up, D-Y-Y-B-U-K. Um, there's 10 of them. They have two. And they have the original one and the another one. And the original one is the story behind that one is uh, this lady who escaped the concentration camps, uh, escaped to Poland, and she thought that an evil spirit had followed her from the concentration camps. So her and a bunch of her religious friends, uh, Jewish friends, put this evil, locked this evil spirit into this box and put a bunch of items in there and sealed it. And anybody who's ever owned it has had very bad things happen to them, up including death and uh, bad things, including there's Post Malone was visiting there and they were tooling around and he, like, Zach touched, like, took the glass off of the thing and he touched it and then Post Malone touched Zach and then after that he had a bunch of, was right before he had his plane crash or his plane almost crashed, his whatever, he was in a car accident or something like that. It all happened right after he had that experience. So anyways... Um, the worst part is uh, walking through, there's a little maze of clowns. <laughs> a lot of clowns. <laughs> Sounds fun. <laughs> like, a, like, a, like, a haunted, like a haunted museum type thing of, of fucking... Uh, yeah, who doesn't love clowns? I fucking hate clowns. Uh, so I was smartly, strategically, uh, placed myself two steps behind this, this young couple that was in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> God bless the little girl. She was so like she's very infa- infatuated with all of the cool like stories behind all of the, the 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 haunted stuff, but does not clearly like haunted houses. And because she's like afraid somebody's going to jump out, or so I very strategically put myself two feet behind them. So as we were walking through, if anything was going to jump out, it's going to jump out at them and not me, uh, which I was very happy about. Uh, they also have Thomas Edison's writing desk. Oh, I should also mention the museum is the house of. Uh, Jenna Jameson's parents, uh, yes, the porn star Jenna Jameson, and they practice satanical rituals in the basement, including human sacrifice. So, there's that. Yeah, it doesn't sound legal. It was the seventies, man. I don't know what do you want me to tell you? I'm actually, uh, fact checking you right now. I'm sorry. That's you can <laughs> this absolutely. Is, this is where I have to. <laughs> that you absolutely can because. Uh, there's a video where Zach talks about, here's the exact text I got from Jenna about when I bought this house. Don't buy that house. It's evil. My dad did, they worship the devil there, this, et cetera, et cetera. And her brother, Jenna Jameson's brother, texted Zach as well. And then when you start digging into it further, all of a sudden he got nothing from Jenna and her brother. They completely were silent, wouldn't respond to him, wouldn't text him back. So probably some lawyer stepped in and said, don't talk to him. Uh, so anyways, it was crazy. Um, they have a they they try to they do try to mix in some good spirits with the bad spirits, so like they have this Ghostbuster exhibit where they have the full Egon his actual screen worn jumpsuit, everything is everything that he wore in the movie. Uh, so they have that they have that they have an actual ghost trap that they used in the movie that still works, um, and then they have the mold for where they made the proton packs out of the you know so they molded around the thing and that cool. was cool and a big picture of Vigo. <laughs> Right as you walk in the door, that's the first thing you see is Vigo. And then they have this hall of like dead celebrities where they have like Truman Capote's outfit he was wearing when he got when he died. They have Patrick Swayze's tooth and his passport. They have the chair from that was sitting next to Michael Jackson's bed that he died in. Um they have some other things. Um and then they have a, a coat from Brandon Lee that he wore in the movie The Crow. It's not the one he died in, but something that he wore. And then next to that, they have this display from Robin Williams of the coat he wore in What Dreams May Come. And I, I asked the tour guy to go, is, did they just buy that because uh, it's Robin Williams wore it and it's screen used and he died? And they're like, yep. I said, then why of all the movies that he's been in, do they pick the shittiest fucking movie that he's ever been in? And the, the tour guide's like, well, I haven't seen it, but I heard it was just filmed very beautifully. I said, sure, but it's the shittiest movie he's ever been in. I would rather watch 
uh, the director's cut of Walter World. In fact, I would rather watch the director's cut of One Hour Photo. And the guy goes, one guy goes, Wayne, you sound actually the guy that was the boyfriend of the girl that I, the couple, the young couple that I was standing behind. He goes, man, it sounds like you're really hating on Robin Williams. I said, no, I love Robin Williams. I am, he is my idol. I love Robin Williams, but this was a shitty movie. Anyways. Right, <laughs> because that one had to do with death and spirits. It did. And maybe that's why, or maybe it was the cheapest. I don't know. But anyways. So yeah, there's some crazy things there, but I do have to say that that Dybbuk box, and I'm not one that like gets scared easily. I mean, like, I, I know how to combat my feeling of fear, you know, because I've been in enough situations where I can kind of fight that flight feeling. But when I was in that room with that Dybbuk box, like, you kind of walk around it, and it's surrounded by a couple things. Um, but I got about half, almost halfway around it. All of a sudden, I just felt really lightheaded. I started to get sweaty. I was really hot. And I just felt like I needed to get the fuck out of there. Like, I need to leave here. I need to, like, that that sense of, like... Uh, flight really hit me like I need to get me the fuck out of here I need to leave to the point where I was standing there and the tour guide was talking and in my brain all I was thinking about was shut the fuck up open that door because they do close the doors when you go in um, I'm just like in my brain I was like shut the fuck up get out of my way or before I punch you and rip open this door he stopped talking and then he opened the door I didn't have to say anything I just kind of stood there and just was silently dealing with this and then when I left I felt a lot better but I, I don't know if I believe in like the, all that supernatural stuff, but man, uh, that Dybbuk box is not something to fuck around with. It is the most haunted item in the world. Um, so, I, like I said, that was my weird experience with it. Um, so, quick on that uh, thing that Zach Baggins was talking about, the house with the satanic rituals. Yes. He's the only source. Right, but he's got the text from Jenna Jameson. He's and, literally the only source. Absolutely nowhere else agrees with what he's saying. Well, would you? And texts can uh, be. I understand that. Yeah, I just I'm, I'm just pointing that out. That, and, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, but would you talk about the house where you killed people? No. <laughs> would you try to hide it? I'm I'm saying that. It, I get it. I know, yeah. I know what you're saying, and I don't. Yeah. I'm not. He's just the playing devil's advocate. Yeah, he being the, <laughs> the he he being the only person who would know the truth is the one saying is the one person who is he is the only right. source for this story. Right. Absolutely, no one else agrees with him. Absolutely, everyone else denies sure. it. Um, oh, yeah, they also have stuff there from John Wayne Gacy. But more specifically, actually, no one else has talked about it other than him. Right. Well. So. Um, I mean, well, maybe they just you know maybe they hype it up and maybe you know I yeah it sounds like he he may maybe he's hyping it, but um, at the same time I, I don't mean, know there's still other bad things in there that are weird and yeah anyways uh, but the other thing on my sort of vacation that happened when I came back actually is there was a there was a nerdy outcon down down in Rochester this past weekend and I bought, got some things there I met Jason Muse. Got his autograph. Yeah. I uh, met Ming Chung, who does our, actually did our intro for this episode. I got to talk to him. Ming Chen. Ming Chen, yeah. And I talked to him, and he actually remembered making that thing for us. He goes, yeah. He goes, two years ago, I remember. Oh, you know, cool. He's like, yeah, with a name like Best Reason Ever, how do you forget? I said, well. <laughs> I bought my favorite little thing. Um, it's in a little Star Wars box, like an action figure. But uh, Oh, is uh, this the, yeah, yes, Alderaan. Pieces of Alderaan. Pieces of Alderaan. That's awesome. Awesome. And yes, I know it's gimmicky, but I thought it was fucking. I love that that's, gimmicky shit, that, though. That's great. And I for love like, that. I think I spent, I bought like 10 bucks on this. I'm like, okay. Totally yeah, worth 10 totally bucks. Worth totally it. worth 10 bucks. This is that book I talked about last time, by the way. This book. Uh, the Star Wars Vault yeah. book. I got a bunch of stickers, as you can see on my fridge. There's uh, new Pawn Stars. I got Spaceballs, the sticker. Spaceballs, the sticker is definitely my favorite. Uh, the Ravenclaw, a Deadpool sticker. Groot holding a sunflower, I think. Yeah. Uh, a. A, um, a I drink and I know things flask. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I saw that. Yeah, and then this little Ooh, grand cool. moth patch because I just thought it was cool. And then Kevin bought me Brack from 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 the Star Wars land. He brought me back a ray saber too, <laughs> which is a ray saber. Sorry, isn't that what I said? I, I yes, it is exactly what you said. I just didn't hear it right. That's all. Gotcha. Uh, a ray saber, yes. So, uh, thank you for that, Kevin. Thank you for transporting that across the country. Welcome. Yes, he did. He did pay for it. It was not a very expensive <laughs> gift from the bottom of my heart. I, I, did wait, not, wait, wait, wait. I did not get him a lightsaber <laughs> and you just the the, the the cute postcard. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, no, no. I did. I did. I asked him Great, to buy it for you. me. 
If you listen to our last episode, I did ask him to buy it for me. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, you got a cool little postcard from him that got uh, looks like an original sketch from The Mandalorian, which is very cool. I'm trying to think about anything else that I did in Vegas that was um, abnormally cool or weird or um, no, it was pretty much as food and walking around and ghost stories, ghost stories and uh, eating. And we didn't have any like outstanding meals there, which I was sad about. And that was about it, you know. <laughs> what? So Hasbro Lab just released the the Proton Pack that goes with the, oh, yeah, the yeah, Ghostbusters yeah, one yeah, that yeah, I have, yeah. and it's like four hundred dollars. Uh, yeah, I saw I, that on Graham's thing. I need it. <laughs> and I, I still haven't gotten my, and I know why, but I still haven't got my Hasbro Pulse Rifle. Was supposed to be delivered. Me either. Yeah. The 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 Mandalorian one. No, my uh, Aliens Pulse Rifle. Oh, oh yeah, I've sure. got the Mandalorian one. When either. was that was supposed? To, what? That one was supposed to come out like in. September, I think. Really? Yeah. So mine was supposed to be delivered October 1st. So what, Christmas, you think? You get it? Yeah, that sounds <laughs> we'll right. See. Yeah, Christmas. Um, yeah, other than that, Vegas was just kind of gambling and spending more money than I really wanted to, but I didn't actually... But it's Vegas. It's what you it's do. Vegas. There right. I didn't actually lose all that much money. Um, all in all, I think it was $1,100. I'm down. But in for six days in Vegas, that's pretty fucking good. Uh, but I did win the 1200 um, I mainly played penny slots, and then uh, I spent. I only spent fifty dollars on roulette, and I played roulette every night. Uh, so I spent my original fifty, and kept winning, and just spent the rest of my winnings on on roulette every night. And then the last night, we just go, went for broke, and we went broke with this very delightful, <laughs> sure. with this very delightful uh, lady next to us from L.A. who uh, reminded me of like. Missy Elliott, kind of, kind of. She kind of looked very similar to Missy Elliott, but was so excited, and she was winning shit tons of money. Um, she was super bubbly, super fun to be at the table with. Um, I don't, I forget her name, but we spent hours on this table with her, and she was just a delight to to be with. Um, so that was fun. Until he said Missy Elliott, I genuinely had the stereotypical uh, little old Asian Asian lady at the roulette table. No, I really did. No. No. Oh, I'm a bad person. I'm sorry, everyone. Uh, we were trying to coach some youngsters through how to play roulette and yeah. how to bet better and don't reach for the chips until the little gold piece is moved off the table. And, sure. Um, yeah. I, yeah, nothing really else exciting. That was just about it. I relaxed, and that's why I didn't get the episode out. I apologize. I was on vacation. No, decided, you're good, man. No worries. I decided I wasn't going to do anything, so I apologize for getting that episode out, which I think came out today. Should have come out today. Um, the day that we're recording. Not the day that, anyways. Um, yeah, well, cool. I drank a lot of booze. Yeah, a lot of free booze. Cool. Probably went through like three or four bottles of Jameson. Nice. Yeah, not drunk once. Cool. Your turn. Okay. <laughs> I was wondering. Um, so yeah, I went to. I also went to Florida. I went after Kevin. Like like you said, we basically passed each other on the highway. Um. <laughs> So I'll just I'll just go quick here. Um, Monday we did Hollywood Studios, we did Star Wars, we did Smuggler's Run. Uh, we didn't do the build your own lightsaber. We actually ended up just getting the legacy sabers, and I got uh, Count Dooku's, and Joanna got Leia's. Oh, yeah, nice. Leia's is really cool. I like it because it's got two emitters. It's got your display emitter, which oh, looks right. like, like the Palpatine one. Yeah, like the little twist off. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yep. Luke has that too. Oh, does he? Okay. But they were, uh, he's who I originally wanted to get, but they were sold out of old green. Oh, that's too bad. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, so we got the Legacy Sabres. Um, and then uh, we did Toy Story Land at uh, at Hollywood Studios, which is really, really good. Did you do the little shoot up game? <laughs> I the, didn't. The, the ride? Oh, the, the Toy Story Mania? Oh. See, we're coming back to the simulator thing, though, and 3D but glasses. Well, it, it's got the 3D glasses, but it's because it's a bit more of a ride, it doesn't it doesn't hit the same as a simulator. Okay. Um, my my ex, uh, she had problems with Star Tours and simulators, sure. but she had no problem with Toy Story Mania. Oh, interesting. Um, so uh, we didn't end up doing that, and I think I'll do that next time we go. But um, what we did do was uh, the Slinky Dog Dash, which is the roller coaster that they have there. And it's a roller coaster themed after Slinky Dog. It's real cute. Okay. Um, and it's real good, actually. For a roller coaster at Disney, it's good. It's annoyingly good. <laughs> 
And then, uh, let's see, we did Tower of Terror, of course. Uh, I haven't been to Hollywood Studios since I was a kid, so it was very different this time around. I haven't been since I was in high school. Yeah. Band trip. Yeah. And, um, oh, and we did, uh, we did uh, Aerosmith Rock and Roller Coaster. Uh, I loved it. Joanna did not. <laughs> Which is weird, because she lives roller coasters, and I do not. Interesting. <laughs> it's an interesting coaster, though. It's a, it's good. Um, I can't believe it's still a thing. Honestly, I it, it works as a coaster. Actually, I I love it. I think it's a but great to coaster. Have the Aerosmith name on it since nine, early ninety nine. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but like it's fine. It's a it's a good coaster. It's a solid coaster, right. and if they retheme it at any point, great. Because uh, they could. Because it would look good if they rethemed it. Actually, I think. Um, her problem was that it was all in the dark. Uh, that that ride is most mostly darkness. Gotcha. Uh, I liked it because it was mostly <laughs> darkness, so I didn't have to see like the giant ass hill coming up over the way for me, yeah. or some awful like loop de loop or anything. I love loop de loops. I love corkscrews. I love that stuff. Um, but I, I do have just like a little bit of anxiety as I see them coming up. So me not getting to see them first and just being in the pitch black, that was great. And that lots was of Aerosmith movie. music. Uh, it's, it's just one Aerosmith song. I hope they rebrand it Thor. Ooh. Same. Especially with Love and Thunder coming out where he, he has very much a rocker vibe to him. Yeah. Uh, that's what I'm hoping. Cause, Thor. Because I don't know if you noticed that that big kind of uh, layered orgy building that they're they're building kind of between – um, the World Showcase and 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 the the sorry not the World Showcase um between um oh uh, between Tower of Terror and Rock and, and Roller Coaster I think so they they are they're putting they're some the, Marvel stuff and they are putting some Marvel stuff in Epcot too okay um, where like because if you look at Epcot it kind of looks like the Millennium Falcon mm. and where the cockpit would be they're putting in like a Guardians of the Galaxy thing oh I thought they were doing the Guardians thing at Hollywood Studios no, they were but they decided to keep because they, I think they were going to put it where the Tower of Terror is, but I think they're keeping it that for now. Okay, is the Marvel the Mar the new Marvel thing that they have experienced? Is that in Florida or California? California. Gotcha. Yeah, they, yeah. They, Marvel they, Campus, the Avengers Campus is in California. Um. So yeah. So did all that, and I do want to talk about two rides, uh, really quickly here. And one of them is uh, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is a trackless dark ride. Trackless? Yes. So, so your feet dangle? No. Yeah. No. So the uh, the cars aren't on rails. They're not on a track. They move around the space via lasers and shit. What? Yeah. So the cars move on their own. So they uh, on their own. They're they're just they're robotically powered. Interesting. Yeah. They're uh, and and they just move on their own and they go throughout the space, which is really cool because. On Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, it's this idea that you're on these train cars mm-hmm. uh, on Goofy's uh, train tr- uh, train, and then the cars break away from the track <laughs> <laughs> or break away from the train, and now they're just sort of moving independently of each other throughout the space in the room and you're watching this show go on and you go through and you get to Daisy Duck's ballet class where she's at the front of the room and she's directing you in a ballet class and no shit, the car's goddamn waltzed. Neat. I'm serious. Yeah, they That's fucking waltzed. Fucking cool. so and is- then they rombud out of the room. Now I'm kind of sad I didn't do yeah, that. Yeah, you really should have. It was so good. It was so much fun. We'll, we'll so- have to do that when the three of us go. Hell yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think of my joke in a second. So it was like a simulator, not like a roller coaster. No, no, no. So, so it's a, it's like it's like a cart going through a building. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, like an like an old love tunnel type. Uh, not how do I explain? Have you done Haunted Mansion? Have you done? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Like Haunted Mansion. So, so yeah. you know the Doom buggies, yep. and they're on this track. Yep. Same idea, okay. but there's no track. Gotcha. Yeah. So yeah. it goes through. It goes from scene to scene to scene. But instead of being on a track like Haunted Mansion, right. it's it, it they're separate. They yeah. can they don't gotcha. have a track to move yep, on. Yep, they yep. can move anywhere on the concrete floor that they have. Gotcha. It's really cool. Um, was, I, my, um my my laughy thought was when it when we do the waltz, it would be like obviously you guys would have your 
significant others, and then it'd just be me in a cart. Just, eh, eh. We'd all be in the same cart because they're oh, are they? They're like six person carts. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Uh, uh, but like, oh, I'm it's to get you a lady type by then. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, the Minnie Mickey's Runaway Rail- Railway was amazing, and it's mostly because of this trackless system. Right. It's right. really cool. That I is, think it's going to be. Really cool. That's going to be the next thing for these for these scene show for these show rides that they do, like Haunted Mansion, like like a, a, a small world, like Pirates. Isn't like, that kind of what uh, Rise of the Resistance does? Or they is that don't track? have trackless. There is a, oh, It's not a track. trackless though. Gotcha. Um, okay, so well, yeah, that was really cool. And I want to talk about Remy's Ratatouille Adventure at Epcot, which is also a trackless dark ride. That wasn't as good. <laughs> I'm really disappointed because they just do the movie. And also, yeah. you've got to do 3D glasses, which is fine for me. Joanna doesn't like them. It's whatever. Um, I didn't mind the 3D glasses. It didn't need the 3D glasses because it, it was just a fucking movie. We've all seen the movie. Yeah. And so you're just playing a rat that's running through the restaurant. And by the end of the movie, you're, or by the end of the ride, you're at Remy's new restaurant that's all run by rats. And that's wasn't very good. Mm. I wish it had been better. The only thing it had up on the Mickey and Minnie's uh, railway one was that it had um, effects. Right. Sprayed water, smells. <laughs> and that, I hate that. Really? I hate the smells. Does it the smell? smell like rats? Cause no, like, no, it smelled like, a, it like food. Because yeah. you go on like the, the imagination one at Epcot. And it oh, has yeah. the, the, the skunk smell. Oh, yeah. Or like wow. at, at uh, Magic Kingdom, they have the, the, the Lilo and Stitch one. Oh, sure. Where like, he burps chili dogs, but it just smells like fucking vomit. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I that, don't like the smells. The Lilo and Stitch one used to be this old alien ride that I tore. And the alien escape one fucking ruled. It did rule. And then they replaced it with bullshit. I feel bad for when we went there in a, on a band trip, and I think I mentioned this before, but uh, my the girl, my friend Katie who later became my girlfriend, but now we're just friends. But anyways, we dated in high school. Anyways, she sat between my friend uh, Matt and I, and it's interactive, right? Like, it's got the little air and the water and all that crap. We made it more interactive for her, and it because she was already scared enough by, like, the wind and shit blowing in her face. We tormented the shit out of her on that ride. I feel so bad about it. Actually, I don't, because it was Every pretty time there was a wind hilarious. effect on a ride, it just brought me joy. A what effect? A, a, like a, a wind, wind thing. Oh, a wind effect, yeah. I, I like, like those. Oh, yeah, Give it to daddy. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, rats and I did, yeah, yeah, and I did the, the thing is that one's on virtual queue right now because it's brand new. Yeah. Um, so, I did the virtual queue. I got up at 6.50 in the fucking morning, made sure we got in line and got the virtual queue for the, for the ride because it, we love Ratatouille. We wanted, and we were going to Epcot. It's my favorite park. Uh, they're doing the food and wine thing. And I was like, it's going to be a trackless ride. We should probably not drink until we go on the ride. The ride was at noon. Park opened at 10. That meant two hours of not doing the food and wine festival for us. And we did the ride, and I was like, I need a fucking drink because that was not worth me going two hours of not enjoying my favorite park during my favorite time of this park. I was upset. Um, So, yeah, so I did Epcot on Thursday. Uh, We did Magic Kingdom Tuesday and Friday. Uh, and we used the Genie Plus system and uh, their their Fast Pass system. It is useful if you know you're going to want to get on as many rides as you possibly can in a park. Sure. Um, so we were able to get on most of the rides. Uh, the only two at Magic Kingdom that aren't on that are Seven Dwarfs and uh, Space Mountain. Sure. Uh, otherwise, you can use fast passes for practically everything else, and it was good. It was fun. Um, let's see. I'll just go through the things I got. Uh, we got lightsabers at Hollywood Studios. I got uh, Count Dooku. Uh, Joanna got uh, Leia's lightsaber. Ah, uh, uh, let's see. We got we got new etched glass uh, mugs. I got an Epcot mug. She got a Tinkerbell one to replace her old stemless wine glass that broke, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and we got really into pin trading this time around. Love it. It's oh, my I got p- so many pins, baby. Oh, oh. We'll talk. We, we should. We, do- we, we should. We, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Was that English? <laughs> 
to we us. Understood. We understood. <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll talk about pins then. Yeah, I yeah. got really into it this time. It was a lot of fun. Love pins. Love it. Um, I, I like getting the old Mickeys as much as possible. Um, then, uh, let's see, Animal Kingdom, which was fine, ran into the old uh, winemaker character out at Fest, Mike Heck. Oh, wow. Yeah. Ran into him. Uh, knew, knew he was going to be there. Though. Okay. Uh, we knew, and I, I had sort of planned it out with his wife of like, hey, we're going to be here this day. You're going to be here that day. Why don't we just meet up for a quick talk, a picture, and then we can go on about our day. Well, and like the beverages and Tweet and Aaron are They're all now, fucking down right there now. right now. Yep. 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 Like most of our friend group has just been there. It's just Disneying hard right yeah, now. Yeah, Disneying hard right now. Um, so saw the hex that was adorable. Their 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 moppets are, are cute, and uh, their 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 uh, their girl moppet is especially huggy and just wouldn't let go of Joanna the entire time we were talking. <laughs> it was cute, but also birth control. Uh, <laughs> uh, so that was Wednesday. That was Animal Kingdom. Thursday was Epcot Food and Wine Festival. Yo, love it. I love that. We didn't eat out of the actual uh, food booths there, except for once because they were the only the French the French place was the only place that had macarons, mm-hmm. and so we had to get a macaron. Right, macaron. Otherwise, uh, we ate out of the kiosks the whole time. Oh, so worth. Oh, I love it. Love it. Um, there is in Germany. Um, they have a, a a beer booth that has a great that is a grapefruit. Um, sour, sour, and it just fucking tastes like grapefruit juice. Nice, like good, nice and sweet grapefruit juice. It is so good. Nice, and it gets you a little, you know, a little, little, little snacky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we did a lot of the wine flights that were available because mm-hmm. that was fun for us. I, I enjoyed that. We did see, a- and we didn't we didn't do as much of the the food and wine kiosks as I would have liked, uh, but lunch was very filling. Oh sure, um, and- that's how we ate. Mm-hmm. We chose to do it that way, though. Like, I understand going to the restaurants, and that's super cool. And we considered doing Chefs de France. Um, but ultimately, we're just like, but we're going to be at the kiosks every time today. Mm-hmm. So we like we started our day at like 1030 in the morning with a fucking lamb chop. Like, nice. I'm okay with that. <laughs> the fucking Australian booth had a lamb chop, and we were there. <laughs> so... um yeah, otherwise, we found a sushi place in town uh, to meet up with Matt Letter, okay. uh, the, the prince out at Fest, Yeah, because um, he lives down there now. Yep. Uh, and so we, we had sushi there, and uh, yeah, that's about it. We drove down and back. That's all I got. Um, I'm just trying to think of if I bought any other things. Oh, we got tattoos. We got little Mickey ears tattoos at Universal Studios They're because the cute. irony... <laughs> But yeah, that is it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> keep that keep, pause in. Keep that in. <laughs> uh, I was expecting like 30 more minutes of the shit. <laughs> nah, nah, I heard how long you were going and I figured I'd... I wasn't trying to be so long. I was just trying to think of all the shit I did. Sorry. I know. I was playing Nick the role was the Rob me. today. He was. was and I, I, I was aware of it, and so I had to shorten to, as much as possible. To be fair, though. <laughs> to be fair. Sorry. On the last episode, I got shafted a little bit on the Ren Fest uh, recap, so I took <gasps> sure. up that time. Yeah. Hey. I didn't get to say all the things I got to say. So oh, yeah. So that's fine. You guys had a lot more experience, and that's fine. Not a big deal. Uh, anyway, so anything else that we need to talk about before we get so. out of here? Well, thanks for listening to us and our uh, wonderful um, <laughs> uh, vacation-filled episode. Uh, yeah. So, obviously, if you ever want advice on where to go and what not to do in Disney World, and- <laughs> oh, hey, Jesus. so sorry, hey robot, I'm so sorry. Uh, that was BB thirty seven, bad dog in a row. That was my B. Um, which is funny that you have BB thirty seven, and I met Jason Mewes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Quinky Dinkle. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, other than that, I don't think any upcoming events. Um, nope. But be on the lookout for the best threesome ever tours Orlando show. That's <laughs> gonna happen. Are Are we doing Rocky this Friday? No. Okay. It was last Friday. Was it? Oh, uh, that's why we didn't do it. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, we were kind of. In we were all buzz. busy. Yeah. Um. But they're gonna do the Fitzgerald Fitzgerald again. So maybe we might do one of those. I don't know. Okay. I talked to her. Which would be fun to play too.
BB thirty seven is sad that we are ending. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Uh, this has been Best Reason Ever, episode one hundred and thirty eight, brought to you by Jaybird Wines and Heroic Goods and Games. I'm Nick. I'm Rob. And we will see you next time. The views held here by the nerds of Best Threesome Ever do not directly reflect the views of nerds everywhere. (laughs) 